a good night for basketball here, Darren, as you have the Blue Dragons undefeated. They moved up in the polls to eighth place on Tuesday's most recent poll. And they're 9-0 on a year, and they're taking on the Neosho, Neosho Panthers, who are 4-8. and eight. They may be a dangerous team. They have 99 and a loss to Redlands the other night, and that was on Monday night. They also lost to Dodge City, so a little bit of a dangerous team. We'll see what's going to take place tonight. I think that is the thing to look for with Neosho, a team that's averaging just a shade under 77 points per game on the season, but 80 points in conference play. So they've had a little bit of an uptick there and a big uptick in rebounding per game in conference play. 61 and a half rebounds. That's best in the conference right now as far as getting to the board. So the Blue Dragons will want to start a little bit quicker than they did against Independence and obviously box out. Hutchinson Lady Dragons, 2-0 uh, and in the conference race with a win over Coffeyville, and then you turn around with the win the other night at home against Independence. They were able to defend their home turf against a pretty stingy de de defense for Independence. Coach Andres on the sh show on us. Monday night at the Polo Lounge, a little concerned about it. if the girls played like they did against Indy, they, they very well could get, get beat by this Panther team. Well, had the first half of all season and come out shooting just 17% in that first half of play. That's not Blue Dragon basketball no. that we've been accustomed to seeing. But that second half team was more like a John Anches coach team. And I think if you get that team from that second half, so putting that together, you'll see better things, at least offensively, from the Blue Dragons. Well, it took until the 6.39 mark of that fourth quarter with Ogle hit the three-pointer that just kind of spurred transition basketball all of a sudden, and Hutchinson was able to take it away and won it by 11 over uh, the, the Pirates of Independence. So they set uh, at 2-0 uh, and in conference play, 9-0 and overall, and uh, kind of in the driver's seat for now as we're playing these east side teams in the Jayhawk Conference race. As, uh, Seward's already taken the tick down by Butler getting beaten. It'll be a big game coming up on Saturday. But first of all, you got to pay attention to this game right here. Well, I think you hit it on the nose when you said Abby Ogle hits that three and then the team took off from there. You're always looking when your team is not playing well for that one player or a couple of players who are going to make that spark. And for this team, a lot of those players that have experience are coming off of the bench this season. So you look to a freshman guard like Abby Ogle to do that for you. You hope that that experience from those sophomores will kick in as well. But you think about the Blue Dragon men's teams we've seen over the years. When they hit those runs, it's usually one guy you can always count on to create that spark. Is that person Abby Ogle for the Blue Dragon women? Or is there someone else as well that could be that person to ignite this team if the other players aren't doing so well. Yeah, good point. If you are scouting the, the Lady Dragons, it's one thing you, that you probably say is, hey, keep uh, them away from getting in transition because they're really good in transition. And I like the youth of John's team right now. The ladies, uh, they're young, so are the guys as far as that's concerned. But Schimmel and, and Van Ant and, uh, and, you know, and um, Apisua uh, coming in. Ogle, we mentioned her coming in, doing a good job. I thought a key player the other night that did a really good job was Ty Kimbrough as she came in off the bench and really made a dip, big difference in that ball game. Timeout's going to be coming your way, a two-minute timeout as they get set for the National Anthem. Darren and I'll be back right after this. This is Carter File, president of Hutchinson Community College. I invite you to join us this winter as the proud tradition of Blue Dragon men's and women's basketball continues at the historic Hutchinson Sports Arena. Both teams are favorites in the tough Jayhawk Conference, so you won't want to miss any of the action. Find the schedule at BlueDragonSports.com, like us on Facebook, and follow Blue Dragon Sports on Twitter. As always, go Blue Dragons. Vehicles are getting pretty smart these days with semi-automatic control features that make driving easier. But riding an RCAT vehicle is easier yet. You don't have to do a thing. Just stand along the route, wave your hand at the driver, and hop on. RCAT is first-come, first-served general public transportation that travels throughout Hutchinson and South Hutchinson hourly on weekdays from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 694-2913 for further information. Just as the Hutchinson Blue Dragons athletics are a tradition, so is the Anchor Inn in downtown Hutchinson. Whether you plan lunch or dinner or even take out for home, the Anchor Inn is a great family restaurant that you are sure to enjoy. Order off the great menu or take advantage of the Anchor Inn's awesome buffet. You'll make a great choice either way. The Anchor Inn is also a great spot to meet up with old friends and acquaintances because everyone goes to the Anchor. That's the Anchor Inn at 128 South Main in Hutchinson, proud supporters of Hutchinson Blue Dragon athletics. 
Next Tech Wireless has plans for every lifestyle, including our new and improved advanced pay plan. Get the nationwide coverage and data you want without a commitment. Plans start at $30 per month, and you can get unlimited everything for as low as $35 per month. Activate a new advanced pay plan and receive a free Moto G4 Play. Or receive your first month free when you purchase a new phone or bring your own phone. Tis the season for savings. Visit Next Tech Wireless today. Certain restrictions apply. Well, welcome back to Chinook, Kansas. Uh, nice gymnasium here now, Darren. I played, well, it was here years ago. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I think it was Ryan Swanson's team. We came in here in a, in a Region 6 playoff and, uh, and got a win here. And this is this gymnasium plus the whole facility here has been totally redone and really a nice facility for, for this team to play basketball in here. Well, they have those beautiful chairs for everyone to sit on. We're sitting on a few of them here at Press Row, and they have the accents of orange abound. I do feel like, though, here at Press Row, we could order up some shakes and fries yeah, and burgers about, got nice with, with the high top bar. Got a nice little uh, counter here to, to uh, lean up against, but uh, uh, nice situation here in Chinook. Nice little town as you travel into just uh, north of Ottawa and, and uh, south of Ottawa, excuse me, and north of the Independence area as well, and Fredonia and that whole area. So uh, nice little drive out on this beautiful day. I remember last year we fought a snowstorm all the way back, or at least remnants of one plus deer in the antelope <laughs> yeah I was, looking, I was looking through my notes and i think you had to fight that alone i don't remember what i was doing uh, but i remember the last time i was here was 2016 okay so you a couple years removed from this all right well glad to have you back tonight as well so uh, we're getting set to get underway as coaching staffs are both on the court and girls are warming up and we'll be going with starting lineups coming your little way in, in just a little bit Big uh, weekend this weekend of uh, basketball. Matter of fact, uh, for the ladies and the guys, their finals are now finished as of the, today. A lot of people will be going home. Important for a good crowd to come out on Saturday night as Butler comes to town. The only time that we'll match up against the Grizzlies will be this weekend on, on Saturday. So if you want to come out and see some good basketball, both the guys and the gals, it will be uh, a good opportunity. And like I said, kind of need the support because the students are going to be gone and good opportunity to come out and and take a look. Also, high school action continues on Friday night right here on KHUT 102.9 as the uh, Hutch High Salthawks got underway last night. A couple of tough losses, one in overtime to uh, Bueller in the girls game and a tough loss to the guys, but they'll regroup and head down to Arc City. We'll be down in Arc, Kansas City coming up on Friday night. In between, a lot of other things going on around the area. Good start to high school basketball all around the state of Kansas and We'll be reviewing some of that. Let's go ahead and give starting lineups if you wish to, Darren, and we'll take an extra break here coming up in just a little bit. What you got? All right, for Neosho, Kelsey Hens, a six foot one redshirt freshman from Whitewater at forward. She averages nine on the season, but she's seen a little uptick here in conference play, averaging 14 and a half. Watch for her to be a scoring threat. Alexis Kasher, the five foot nine guard, she's a redshirt sophomore from Irvington, Alabama. Kaylee Augustine, a six-foot sophomore from Walnut, Kansas. She averages 11.7 on the season. She's seen a little bit of a downswing, though, in the scoring department when it comes to conference play, where she averages just seven. Chrissy Brown, a five-foot-nine freshman from Lafayette, Louisiana. She is this team's leading scorer as far as consistency goes. She averages over 10 on the year and 13 here in conference play. And then finally, Erica Birch, a six-foot-two sophomore from Topeka, Kansas. For the Blue Dragons, a similar starting lineup that you've seen this season with one minor change. You'll see Abby Ogle, the five foot eight freshman from Baldwin City, Kansas, make the start. Tia Bradshaw is that change, the five foot eight sophomore from Dodge City, Kansas. Started most of last year, will get the nod tonight instead of Milan Schimmel. She'll come off the bench. Dejan Roebuck, the five foot eleven sophomore from Olathe, Kansas. Michaela Vanette, the five foot six freshman from St. Paul, Minnesota. And for the Blue Dragons, of course, you can't start them off without Jada Mickens, the six foot sophomore from Liberal. Should be a good matchup. We're going to take a about a one minute timeout, come back and uh, set the stage for this one. Again, it's Hutchison versus the Lady Panthers of Neosho from Chinook, Kansas. Darren Dunn along with 
Yours truly, Glenn Grunwald. We'll be back right after this. Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Superstores. In the month of December, we will be partnering with the Hutchison branch of Toys for Tots. We will be collecting new and unwrapped toys. We will begin collecting Monday, December the 10th through Saturday, December the 15th. For each donation, we will enter that person into a drawing for some great prizes. So please join us in supporting your local Toys for Tots and come see us at 1100 East 30th or online at MidwestSuperstore.com. At Strategic Financial Concepts, we understand if income taxes continue to go up as they have for almost the last 30 years as per the IRS, you may need to adjust your spending habits so you don't run out of money. How much money are you going to give to the government in the form of income taxes over your lifetime? Let's have a cup of coffee and a conversation. Call me, Jay Pitzer, at 96-007-49. Securities offered through the ON Equity Sales Company, member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through ON Investment Management Company. I want to that. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Chanute. Glenn Grunwald, Darren Dunn, so glad to have you along this evening. And now they darken the lights, and I'm glad we did the starting lineups early, Darren, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. A little bit of atmosphere here in Chanute tonight. Yeah, they're getting into it. There's shots in our eyes as well. We're kind of feeling the moment as well. I guess this is why they called it the show. Say Joe. Say Joe. Out here in the show. They call it the show box. Out on the baseball field because they're primarily known for this their baseball and they've had a great baseball program here. And nice little community. Several coaches from the JL Conference have had their start here at Chanute. One of them is, is down at Barton right now. The head coach, Coach Fletchall, was here after he left from Cali. Jeremy Campsey. Uh, Ed Men's coach here came from Pratt. He was the coach there when they won the Region 6 with Kirby Ross as the head coach. So here in left here, JJ Davis has been here six years and has done a nice job at the program. I know he's getting a lot of red shirts as well on his roster. So primarily Kansas girls, a few mixture of Louisiana, Oklahoma, and a couple of kids from Texas on their roster. Again, solid from a couple from Florida as well. Look like redshirt sophomores and freshmen as well. So we're about set to jump center. Introductions have taken place. Referees are set to go. And now they're double checking their. Well, I think they, they announced a starter who was not listed originally in the book. It was someone that none of us had, at least on this end of the table. So they might be looking to see if it was actually officially marked that way before the 10 minute mark. That's what the officials are looking at with. Assistant coach Travis Kirk. All right, now they break their huddle, and both teams will get set to get going here. And we'll be underway here in Chanute. Again, a beautiful Wednesday at the start of this December. Christmas just around the corner. Girls have three more games remaining. This one against also Butler on Saturday, and then a week from tonight, travel up to Concordia, take on Cloud County. Who's off to a good start. So Mickens is going to jump center. And that is the change, Glenn. Haley Steiger will get the start here for Neosho. Oh, Steiger out of Carrollton, Oklahoma. So here we go. On jumping center, Mickens controls it, and Vanette has it. So Hutchinson with the first possession and a positive turnover against Hutchinson early. First four seconds to the ball go over to the Lady Panthers. They'll bring it up the court. Right to left as you're watching this one. Glad to have you along on the Blue Dragon Sports Network as well via YouTube. And there's a travel call. Goes against Neosho. Maybe slipping a little bit was Chris Brown, but you could tell she took a couple extra steps. Turnovers are even now, one apiece. Yeah, that was one of those you could blame either on the floor or on her shoes. Up the court, jumper missing, rebound's going to be cleared out by the Panthers. They'll bring it and push it all the way down. Contact made, blocking foul will be called. Van Ness going to pick up the personal. Nice job by Chrissy Brown as she accelerated to get all the way in. The foul is going to be against Van Ness, and that will be Michaela's first personal. 
Inbounding right side baseline will be the Panthers. No score as of yet. 29 seconds into this first quarter of play. Ball comes in right side. Good defense by Mickens. Now they belly up. Outside. Scoring away. Bradshaw off the bad pass. Two turnovers against Neosho. Over to right side. Drive by Ogle underneath. Shot too strong. Rebound for four. Ogle fits it back. Here's underneath is Roebuck, and she misses and touches him. 0 for 3 so far at the start of this game. Over penetration, they'll kick it back on the outside. There's Casher. She'll drive in, puts it up, draws the foul, and Roebuck with the reach in. That'll be her first. It'll be a shooting one, Darren, as they'll go to the line to shoot free throws. The Ocho already two turnovers, as you mentioned, in this game. You can tell, aside from that nice drive by Casher before that, this offense is a little discombobulated. Free throw toss up and good by Casher. So she cashes in. Catch that on the first shot there from the free throw line. She'll get a second one. Been I, around YouTube, actually. You know? I, I read you. I read you. 10-4, good buddy. Here comes the left uh, hand shot. Not there. Rebound Roebuck, and Hutchinson will bring it up. Bradshaw. Good drive ball to go by Ogle. Just too strong on the glass. Had trouble against the much taller Steiger at 6-1. Ogle, corner left. Feet down low to Mickens. Low block. Kicks it back out. Save. Nicely by Ogle. It's in Bradshaw's hands. Gave it alive. Right side, bounce pass over the corner right to Bradshaw. Back out top. Shot from outside, a three-pointer up and rimming. No good on the miss by Vanette. As it bounced straight up off the iron and hit the support mechanism next to the shot clock and out of bounds it was. Yeah, that's one thing you hate about having these enclosed gyms where you have the supports behind the goals and the shot clock right above the goal. Panthers, backdoor play, open good. Casher puts it up and in, and it is a three to nothing lead. Neosha with the early lead. 8.19 to go in this first quarter play. Vanette in traffic, over to Ogle, right side. Bounce pass, too strong, and is not able to handle it. Was making turn over another one against Hutchinson. John talked on the show on Monday night. They have got to some way fix these turnovers, just way too many. He'll, he'll put up for 12 to 14 a game and not 24 or 23. Well, they did such a good job of breaking that three-quarter court press, but once the ball got into the front court and over in the corner, it was just a poor entry pass. Angle dribble to the right side. It's Brown. Now it's been away, and with it is going to be Hens. And a rebound off the missed shot, put it in back in there now. It's going to be Tinney as she has just checked in. Here's Bradshaw. She'll back back away. And Right side over to Bannett again. And Mickens down low. Wheels and deals. Puts it up and in. And one. Count it. Mickens with a nice move. Jada coming alive in this one. She'll shoot in one. And that's who you want to go against. Tiger underneath mm -hmm. would be somebody who can match her in size. It's six foot against six foot one. Free throw shot up and good by Mickens. A 3-3 three, three tie. So Mickens with all three points for the Blue Dragons. Travel call goes against the Osho. And I'll tell you what, Chrissy Brown has had two of the several turnovers that they have had so far. Just going a little bit too fast. You mentioned Mickens, the only points for the Blue Dragons. It's Mickens versus Cashier right now, each with three. And a turnover to backcourt is... Bad pass by 10. We go the other way. Shot not there. Bradshaw's there to get the rebound. Hutch on the run. Bradshaw falls down. And what the call is going to be, it'll be a push foul against the Neil Show Panthers. And the foul will be on Brown. That'll be her first. Tinney will inbound. Gets it in. Bradshaw. Angle dribble to the left side. Out to get the ball is Schemmel. Now Vanette over to Tenney. Back to Vanette. Dribbles in between. A little off. Shot up and missing. Rebounds cleared off the floor. Off the court. Quickly comes the Panthers. Hens gets it off. Three point attempt is good. Side. Knocks it down. Brown. Kristen Brown with the three. And it's six to three. Neil show with the early lead. 6.56 to go in this. First quarter play. Schemmel, nice pass down low. Mickens makes it good. Schemmel with the assist. 6-5. The lead is cut to one. Neosha with the lead at 6-5 and the basketball. 6-40 to go in this first half. And a travel call worse against Neosha again. 
a ton of turnovers early on, Darren. Yeah, Neosho not handling the ball well. I think the Blue Dragons are getting better at handling that ball. If they continue to feed Mickens underneath, that's going to be a good spot to kind of force Neosho out of this three-quarter yeah, trap. have to come down and double-team down the little blocks is what Neosho's going to have to do. Bradshaw one-hands it up to Schemmel. She'll split the post, goes down, and draws a foul. Two coming away as a reach-in by two of the Neosho players to see who they caught. Casher. It'll be Casher. It'll be her first. At the line will be Schimmel. Free throws up and good. Milan comes from a basketball family. Also, her dad played baseball, coached baseball. He's from Stanford University, where his undergraduate was. Lots of kids in the family. He had an older sister that played WNBA ball as well. Free throws up and good. She got a boat. Drive on the left side. Stewart up on the under. Lays it up and in. Destiny Stewart had just entered a game. She's out of Arch City, Kansas. Puts it up and in. And 8 7 your score. Neosha with the lead. Here's Schemmel. Shoots it on its way. Not there. Battle for the board. Schemmel rips it away. Jump ball is called. It will be Neosha's way. She jump stopped into that shot. I don't know that she got enough control before she went up. But the one thing that Schimmel brings to you is ball security. Is a two to one assist to turnover ratio. Eight seven ball game. The lead is one right now for Neosho. Stewart backs in a little bit, rolls to the right side, all the way down, puts it up, misses it, rebound. Tinney. As Keely Tinney comes out with the basketball, long pass to Vanette. She'll square, shoot it on its way, and miss it. Battle for the board underneath. It's going to be taken away by Stinger. Who comes up with the rebound? Stewart will push it up the court. Hands it off quickly into the hands of Augustine. She'll gun it on its way for three. It's not there. Rebound third out by Schemmel. 8 7 ball game. Neosha with the lead by one. 5.35 to go in the first quarter of play. Vanette, left side. Top of the key. Schemmel barks out the call. Goes over to Brad Schemmel, right side. 17 on the shot clock. Puts it on the floor. Back to Schemmel. Three point attempt. On the side. Good luck from Schemmel. Schemmel with five quick points, going off the free throws, and gives the Dragons a lead of 10 to 8 now. The feet down low, back up the end by Cashier. Cashier right there to put it up and in. She has five, we're tied at 10. There's a breakaway underneath, they're going to miss this layup. Nope, not there, battle for the board. Mickens gets it, puts it back up, too strong, ball knocked away, Schemmel has it. So they'll reset it on the outside. Here's Bradshaw, she'll knife in traffic. Gets up high, and is it a call foul? It will be. A foul's going to be called. Kimbrough will get set to check back in. A couple other Dragons checking in as well. Papasua will check into the lineup for the first time tonight as well. And also Kramer will check in. Blue Dragons on that possession. Got the ball where they wanted it to go. Down there to Mickens. Just for the first time this game, though, Mickens unable to convert. Here comes the inbound from Mapasua. She'll get it in inside the Nene Roebuck, and the ball knocked away off her thigh. Goes over to Neosha with 4.47 to go in the first quarter. 10 10 tie. This one's been back and forth. Neosha had a 3 0 lead and led 6 3. Hutchinson regained the lead at 8 7. Ball on the outside. Augustine. Gets it down low inside the bird. Follow a jumper. Travel call. Goes against the Osho. She missed the shot anyway, but Birch was able to put it up. She's out of Topeka. Well, that was in that territory where you, you, you've got to have something against Erica Birch because she banged in there really hard. So it was, am I going to give her a foul or am I going to give her the harmless turnover? And John Adams, the official, goes with the turnover. It's the fifth one for the Osho. Kapasua turns the ball over. Ball knocked away, and the Osho comes up with it. Here comes Stewart. She'll weave her way through traffic, and she gets called for the double dribble. My goodness, this has been turnover city here on both sides of the of the ledger. 4:15 remaining to go in the first. We're locked up at 10 apiece. Head or nine in the first. It was a 9-9 tie after one with Independence. Strem Schemmel will shoot it on his way. Short shot from outside, no good. It's short. The rebound's going to be cleared out. Here comes Stewart. Pass comes up the court, into the hands of another Jones. She'll fire off a three, doesn't get it. Ball knocked away out of bounds. Who's basketball? It won't be Hutchinson's basketball. Off the missed shot, put up. 
by Amini Jones. She missed it. 10 10 tied. Ball went out of bounds. Mapasua against pressure. Roebuck. Back to Mapasua. Gets it to Ogle. Ogle right side. Kramer. Down to the baseline right. Pulls it back outside. Now we'll set the offense. Roebuck. Ogle oh, was Kimbrough for a second. Didn't get it to her. Back to Kramer. 10 on the shot clock. Ogle takes a look. Takes it inside. Dumps it to Kimbrough. Layup. Nope, not there. Rebound cleared out of there by Neosho. Neosho on the run. Trying to break the tie. Backing in quickly. Down low is Bird. She'll kick it back outside. The three attempt from the out of perimeter. Won't go on a quick shot. Picked up by Neosho, though. To keep it alive. Score. A three-pointer from outside. This time, it was Jessica Jones that knocked it down. 13-10, Neosho with the lead. Ogle drives in traffic, wraps it around, can't get it done, but a foul's going to occur, and Ogle will shoot two. The foul's going to be called on Erica Birch. She just got into the ball game, picks up her first. A lot of action, Darren, early on. 13-10, Neosho with the lead, but a chance to cut into it with free throws here. You love to see the back and forth. You just don't like it when it's turnover for turnover. Free throws up and good by Ogle. Her first point of this evening. She'll shoot a second. Baldwin City's her hometown, not too far from here. Free throw toss up and good. And Abby Ogle got them both down. Driving the right side. Shot rejected. Put up by Bolin. And a rebound stood out by the Blue Dragons. Here's Roebuck. She'll weave her way through traffic. Kicks the corner right to Kramer for three. Rims off no good. Kimbrough with the rebound, however. Keeps it alive. Ty kicks it out. Inside the Roebuck. She'll wrap one around. It wants there. Kimbrough goes up and draws the foul. And they're going to whistle, I believe, Bolin on the arm. Bill Goldsmith will give us a nod. Was at the arena at the uh, sack last night. So Morgan, uh, Morgan Bolin will pick up the rebound. I think he's been officiating as long as Rusty's been broadcasting. You know that? <laughs> they could probably share some stories. His dad was a football coach at Hutch Community College. Street goes up and missing by Kimbrough. Tajuana Kimbrough out of Memphis, Tennessee. Tajuana, excuse me. Tajuana. Tajuana, yeah. Like yawn or on. Street goes up and good. Got one of two down. Shot from outside, the three-pointer doesn't go. Kimbrough's there for the rebound. Roebuck will bring it up. We're tied at 13 apiece. They'll flash it outside. Mapasua will set up the offense. Gets it to the right side. Over to Roebuck. Gives it off to Kramer. Left side, Oval. Mapasua. Looks it down low. Kramer back to Kimbrough. Loose the ball in the paint. Picked up by Kimbrough and then stolen away by the ocean. Stolen back by Oval and a reach in on Oval. Ogle with the reach in. That'll be her first foul. Two, two team fouls, three team fouls against Hutchinson. 2.05 to go in this first quarter play. We're locked up at 13 apiece. Ball's just a grease pig out there. You have 12 turnovers between these two teams in the first eight minutes. Comes the inbound. Up the court will come Chrissy Brown. She'll bring it on the dribble to the left side. Reverses to the right, holds up. Back out top of the key. All stolen away by Bradshaw. Good job with peripheral vision to come up with it. The drive down to Bass underneath. Roebuck goes up, rejected back to her. A foul called. Hutchinson's getting the opportunities down low. Just the Oso defending well. But that time the foul is going to be called. And a two-shot foul coming away of Roebuck. So they got the foul to go against. Was it Hens? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the discouraging thing is, as Roebuck misses the first free throw, is you get these second, third, and fourth opportunities underneath the basket, and then you finally get sent to the free throw line where you end up one of two, at least the last time with Kimbrough, and here with Roebuck. So you're not getting the most out of your possession. Roebuck's first points, 14-13 after the miss on the first shot. All rejected by Kimbrough out of bounds. John Hodges springs off the bench to say something to Roebuck. On the baseline. Kimbrough averaging almost two blocks a game. Here comes the inbound. Ball on the outside right. Spin the move, shot on its way. 
Greek side rebound and a call. The beat on the Greek side was Ogle. And coaches, I think also, it looks to me like Brown kind of shuffles her feet oh so quickly and kind of a habit. That was not Brown that time. It was on the weak side. Hens was able Hens to sneak able in to there. Down. It was a long way to go for Ogle to try to block that out because she was up by the elbow and Hens was sneaking in from the corner and just had a beat on the ball that Ogle couldn't make up. A minute 28 to go. We're tied at 14 now in this first quarter of play. Hens second opportunity. Shots up and rimming. Good. So she has two and it's a 15-14 lead. Neosho with the lead. That's just someone bring the basketball up. Nene gets it across. Here goes the Schimmel, corner right, quickly to Vanette. She gets her feet set, shoots and misses. Tap from the board, knocked away. Schemmel runs it down. Kimbrell really active in the boards inside. To do with that one as she pops it outside. Schemmel, baseline left, drives underneath, puts it up, misses it. Two shots coming her way as a foul is called. A minute and five remaining in his first quarter of play. That's going to be the first one on Ashley Dillinger. She has checked into the lineup. Free throw toss, up and missing by Schemmel. Steiger checks back into the lineup for Neosho. Chance to tie here for Schemmel. Free throw toss, up and good. So Schemmel with six points is tied to score 15 a point with a minute five to go in this first quarter of play. That's what Schimmel has needed. She averaged eight points or has averaged eight points this season. Just five and a half in conference. Already six tonight. Half have come from the free throw line. Ball on the outside. First quarter is good from outside. Put up by Hines as she nails the three and it's 18-15. Now Neosho with the lead. Five points for and there's a layup the other way by Mickens as Mickens comes alive and gets her sixth and seventh point. 18 17, a one point Neosho lead. Steal! Here comes Bradshaw on the run. She'll bring it down. He goes to the left side. Flock back in the hands of Schimmel. Schimmel back outside. Clock dark with 22 seconds to go before the end of the quarter. John Andre says play for one. 18 seconds to go. Bradshaw, top of the key between the circles, looks to the right side. Now back to the left. Going to take a little time. Now it's inside of eight. Bradshaw starts to move. They come out in double team trap. Bradshaw to the right side. Ball knocked away. Bradshaw gets it back two seconds ago. Three by Van Ant. Comes off no good. Shemmel there for the putback, but too late. And at the end of one quarter of play, it's 18 17. Hutchison with the trails by one. We'll be back. For more from Chanute right after this one minute. It's football Time season. Out. When the weather is warm National one day and cold the next, stay ahead of cold and flu season by drinking plenty of liquids, getting enough rest, and keeping your hands sanitized. Come see the friendly folks at Ashcraft Pharmacy, your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy, for over-the-counter medications to help alleviate symptoms. And if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson. And Health Mart, caring for you and about you. First National Bank is always open. We've made it easier than ever to conduct all of your banking from your smartphone, tablet, or laptop. You pick the location to get started, all via fnbhutch.bank. Apply for a loan or open an account over your lunch break or from the comfort of your own home. Electronic banking, everywhere you are. Get started at fnbhutch.bank. We wish you happy holidays and a very Merry Christmas from your friends at First National Bank. We're first for you. Show. A one point Neosho Panther lead, and Lady Panthers lead at 18 17 as we head to the second quarter of play. Got some ugly stats in that first quarter, Darren. Yeah, 19% shooting for the Blue Dragons. If you think that sounds bad, it could be worse. Shot 17% in full first half against the Pirates. One of six for the Blue Dragons beyond the arc. The problem with that is Neosho has hit three. They've done it with a couple of players who aren't three point shooters. Pins and Brown each hit one. They're 18% and 11% on the year, respectively, from beyond the arc. Now, whistle blown, and official's going to come over and check on something. The shot clock didn't start. Yeah, the shot clock did not get going. 
And five seconds are already off at Hutchinson's possession. Roebuck will inbound. Ball comes in quickly and top of the court left side. They'll push it around. Blue Dragons working around the outside. Three pointer by Bradshaw from the corner. A high arching shot doesn't go. Schimmel tips it out. Bradshaw runs it down. And Hutchinson retains possession. Left side, Schimmel. She'll shoot the three. Remy Ma short, no good. She rushes in and gets the rebound. And actually travel because two touch players banged into each other. So you get your 10th and 11th offensive rebounds. And again, the Blue Dragons come away empty. Now one for eight from beyond the arc. The Osho. Top of the key, they'll flash it down low, low blocks in paint. Ball rejected by Mickens, here comes Hutchison. Up the court, Bradshaw loses the ball, turnover. There's another one nearly a turnover. Shemwell, if she turned around with a hat, the Osho in transition, lays it up, fourth and one. Hands is able to shoot it inside. That's her seventh point and will shoot a one shot foul. Foul's gonna be called on Shemwell. Crazy a little bit of basketball right there. Bradshaw turns it over. Schemmel could have had the interception if she turned around, but didn't know it was coming. Free throw toss is up and good by Hens. She has eight. It's 21-17. The lead is four now for the Osho. Pressure in the backcourt. Schemmel goes left side. Tia Bradshaw, top of the key. Out of Dodge City, a sophomore. Left side, Schemmel again. She gives it across. Bradshaw underneath, hands it off to Roebuck. She'll knife inside, put it up and in. This went right in between the outstretched arms of one of the players and puts it up and down. 21-19, Hutch cuts into that four-point lead. Stewart with the corner right. Basketball comes back out top of the key. Now to Casher, left side. Oh, the stink three is good. Augustine knocks down the three. The 31st of the year. 24-19, Hutchinson trails. Underneath, Nick can play up good. Nice pass from Van Etten. Mickens, Mickens with nine. Pass down low underneath, packing foul on Mickens, but she had to do it to keep an easy basket from happening. And going to the line now will be Neosho to shoot free throws in a person of Alexis Casher. And that's just one where you, you've got to get all the way back. You know, Mickens scores the basket, and then she's expected to be the deepest back and let Casher get behind her. And by the time the ball got there, Mickens well too late. Rito Toss is off and off. It's marked no good. She'll shoot a second one. This is where Casher has struggled this season, just a 53% free throw shooter. She'll shoot the second one here. Free throw toss up and good. Got that one down. 25-21. The lead back at four again. For Neosho. And over and back to call on the Blue Dragons as Matt Pasua stepped across. Did not really know where she was on the court. Yeah, she lost that ball when it came back a little bit high. And I was surprised it took the official so long to go ahead and call it. It was almost like he had to be talked into it by J.J. Davis. I understand we have a little static on the stream audio. We'll replace one unit with another here in a minute. Shot up, missing, rebounds from the out by the Blue Dragons. That should bring it up. Van Eck gets set, shoots, and hits. That's good to see. Van Eck with her first corner left where she shot it. It's a one-point game again, 25-24, Neo Show. Dragons now one of nine from beyond the arc. Two of nine. Top of the key, right side. Now back out. No work at the drive by Casher down low. Shot up and good. Well, she talked that one in, didn't she? Yeah, that, that kind of shot does not get any tougher with the defender right in her face. Bennett down low. Tear popped up and good. Offensive foul on Bennett. Bennett will draw the. Call for the charge. That'll be her second personal. 
And that's too bad because that could have been such a big yeah. momentum shift to close within one and tie it with the free throw. It just doesn't go the Blue Dragons way. 6.58 remaining to go. Again, we're in the second quarter of play. Lob down low, turnover. It'll go over to Hudson. Boy, how many turnovers are you going to run out of eating? And now Ten for already. the Osho. And nine now on the Blue Dragons after that last charge. Outside top, over to the left side. Blue Dragons working to Mickens. Apisua. Lauren had it for a second. Back to Shemmel, back to Apisua. Shemmel looks at it. Three pointer doesn't go. Rebound cleared underneath by Bird. She's back in there. And up the court will come to the Osho, the Panthers. They'll move to the right side. That's Jessica Jones. Back up top, Stewart had it. 6.14 to go in the second quarter of play. 27 24, the lead is three for the Osho to beat down low. That's good. good. Scoring it with Jessica Jones. Catch down low and is able to put it up and in. Here's Mickens. Mickens drives in and scores it. Kind of stumbling through the lane, but she got it up and in. 29-26. Hutch cuts the lead to three. Good Largest game for lead. Jade already with 11. Yep, travel call. This one works against Casher. Largest lead has been, again, a five-point lead just seconds ago. Hutchinson will substitute. Kelsey Pratt will check into the lineup. She'll bring it for the first time. Out of South Australia. Apasua. Across the timeline, right side. They come out, push the defensive. Double team. Brett has it. Left side, Tenney. Over to Kramer, who's back in there. Feet down low. Brett couldn't handle it. Turns it over out of bounds. Good pass on the low blocks, but just a little outside of her outstretched arm. Yeah, she got her eyes set on the goal before she secured the basketball. 5.25 to go. Quarter number two. Neil Show 29, Hutchison 26 in ladies play. Feet inside the first. She'll bang inside against Mickens. Shot up. No good. Peters on the rim. Comes out. No good. Mapasua comes away with it. Mapasua on the runs. Goes in between two. Crosses over. Puts it up. Has a rejected. Rebound cleared out of there by Birch on the miss. And up comes Neosho. Neosho all the way down. Weaves her way and just simply loses the handle on the basketball. Turnover against Neosho. And Hutchinson will have it with 4.57 to go. Kimbrough in. We're in the second quarter. Roebuck back in. Here comes Bradshaw in as well. Mickens gets a break. Matt Pasuo will get a break. Both of these teams have been so good moving the ball for three quarters of the court, but once they get 15 feet and in, something happens and the ball turns slick. And we've seen 11 turnovers from the Dragons, 12 now from the Panthers. And we'll pass to the right side of Kramer. Tied on her as Bolin. Here's Roebuck, she'll drive right side, puts it up and in. Was that a charge? No, it's one. On one, thank you. The way he <laughs> did, did the charge call, Roebuck with her, the basket, she has five. It looked to me like he called the charge. I was about to say, no way. Yeah, it can get confusing sometimes if that arm doesn't come completely down below your waist. That was charged against Jessica Jones, her first. Three throws up and good by Nene Roebuck. She has six, and the Dragons have tied it up at 29 apiece. 4.33 to go. In this first half of play, we're in the second quarter. Just put it in. Re rejected out of there on the call by Kimbrough, but they're going to get it on the foul. Her swap through, the follow through got her there. And, and Coach talked about that just in her night at the Strike Truck Show about she needs to learn to go up. At that time, you wouldn't have been able maybe to go up. You got to swat at it to knock it away. The foul called on Kimbrough. Yeah, she has the height, so she's up there. That Follow through ne isn't necessary most of the time. Rito toss is up and good. Rito by Jessica Jones. We've seen it multiple times in this game already as well. Just being in between the offensive player and the basket has been enough to deter a lot of these shots. Rito toss, second one is good. So 31 29, the two point Neo show lead. Hutchison, Brett, right side, back to Brett. Kramer had it for 
for a second. Here's Bradshaw. Her parents here from all the way from Dodge City tonight. Angle to the right side. Brett sets, shoots, and misses. Rebound fought for underneath. Roebuck came out with it. Put one up and a foul called. I was blocked out by all the other players, and all of a sudden Roebuck wrapped it around. Foul's called against Neosho. It'll go on Brown, and Chrissy Brown will have her second. At the line shooting will be Roebuck. Has a chance to opportunity with two here to tie it up. Free throw toss is off the spark, no good. 4.02 to go, quarter number two. Neosho 32, Hutchinson 29. Back into the lineup now will be Destiny Richard into the lineup out of Pryor, Oklahoma. So toss is up and good. So Robux split the pair. Makes it a 32-29 point game. Well, if they put it up on the wrong side, it should be 32-30. Yeah. Actually, they have not corrected that. What is 32-29 is what they have on the board. It should be 31 to 30. So they're going to check on that. They put it up on the home side ledger, and now they're going to adjust it. Should be 31 to 30. And now they got it correct. Ball was knocked away, and it will be over on the right side. Neosha will have the basketball. 3:52 to go. The second quarter of play. Neosho with a one-point lead. Ball comes in. Long three on its way. No good. Nice block out by Kelsey Brett. Out of bounds it goes. It'll be Hutchinson basketball. Shot put up from way outside by Hens. Misses. Hit off the front of the iron. 3.42 to go. Second quarter. Roebuck. To Kim. Side. Back to Roebuck. Underneath. Shot doesn't go, but they draw the foul. Roebuck will again find her way to the line. Good look by Kimbro, maybe even a better cut by Dejanay Roebuck. Roebuck gets set, shoots the free throw. Takes her time, free throw tosses up and good. He'll shoot the second one. Roebuck ends up being a pretty good first half of play after several missed opportunities early on. Free throw second one's good. 32-31, and Hutch is rallied back to take the lead here with 3.32 to go in his second quarter of play. Outside, drive by Neosho into the hands of Bolin. She'll gun and miss. Kimbrough goes high for the board. Gets it out the Blue Dragons, Bradshaw, and she'll bring it on the run. Bradshaw, corner left, out to Kramer. Roebuck has it out high. He's called for the travel. Took one extra step after she picked up her dribble. That's one of those where if you don't look like you're going into what I call the layup routine, where you take your two steps to take the layup, if you do that on the outside, that's where you're going to get caught. But if you stop it short and don't carry that second foot through, she would have been okay with planting the pivot foot. Ball on the outer perimeter. She'll lob it inside. The and she'll drive in and it's knocked away out of bounds off of Kimbrough. But a good block by Kimbrough. She's kind of saying, get that stuff out of here. She averages two a game, just got her second. Here comes the inbound from the Osho right in front of the Dragon bench. Ball comes in, three-pointer by Hens. High arching shot, won't go. Brett with there for the rebound. And Kelsey will bring it up. Over to Kramer. Kramer right side. Whips around two defenders. Goes inside to Roebuck, and she can't finish. The rebound cleared out of there off the miss. Well, actually, it was a turnover. Coming up with it. Here's another three from outside. The ocean rain of threes on a missed shot by Augustine. Here comes Hutch. Bradshaw off the court. Down low, Roebuck. Tonight, layup not there, but a foul called, and they will whistle on the foul in the Osho. Low blocks that's going to go against Hens, and she'll pick up. I have her down for two. Dejanay a little upset with herself. She tried to force herself so much into the body of Hens to create that contact. She was a little strong at the rack. 
Roebuck's free throws up and good. Nene living at the line tonight, huh? Yeah, ever since she got five points, she's hit everything else now from the free throw line. I have her unofficially with 10 already in double figures. Shots up and rimming good. So 11 points for Roebuck and the Hutch lead is three at 34-31. 2.26 to go in the second quarter of play. Substitution in now, Steiger checks back in. 11 and her last six have come from the charity stripe. Break the press, ball out high, Augustine. Don't lost threes, there's another one on its way. Off, no good, rebound cleared out and a hold is called against Roebuck. That'll be her second. What's worse than it being her second is it's the fifth and so Neosho will get a chance to score at the line. Neosho though has gone cold as it should this team only shoots 25.7% from well, the three-point line. I kind of see why. They're throwing up a bunch. Despite what that first quarter looked like. Stigger with the free throw. I have her down. For that's her first point. She'll shoot a second one. Cuts the lead to 34-32. Hutch lead cut down to two. No show. Will. Stigger will shoot a second one. This one's really good. So a 34-33 is your score. Hutchison's lead is cut to one. Bradshaw gets it across. Tinney in and out of Schemmel's hands. Ran down by Mickens. Right side, Kramer. To the left to Bradshaw. Kick it outside. Hutchinson has it. Seven on the shot clock. Schemmel pulls up. Four. Three. Kramer's got to go. Got to put something up. and picked out of the pocket to be a shot shot violation. And a turnover. Yosho will have the basketball with a minute 44 to go. Not a good position, Darren. Well, a tough place to be with time running out 35 feet away from the basket. And to have one of your shorter players in Sarah Kramer at 5'5 locked up by someone who's four or five inches taller than she is. Stewart weighs everybody down. She'll bring it up. White hand band, band on. He'll drive, drive on Bradshaw. Puts it up. And misses. Rebound cleared off the off right side by Neil Show, but they miss again. And here comes Bradshaw. As Bowling with the miss. Bradshaw all the way through and picked away by Neil Show. They'll come up with the turnover. Stewart will push it with a minute and 17 to go. Bowling outside again to Stewart. She'll lob one up, not there, but the weak side board taken by Casher. She'll put it up, not there. And rebound cleared out by Sarah Kramer. She'll bring it out. And four to go. Hutchinson up by only one. 34 33. Hutch inside of a minute now. Bradshaw to Kramer. Left side. Tinney. Keeley out to Kramer. She'll launch the three. Hits it. A timely three by Kramer. Her first of the ball game. 37 33 now. Hutch up top by four. Let's show top side. Casher over to the right. Angle dribble right side. Shot put up, missing, rebound. Tinney underneath. And boy, one player had her around the neck, and then she pulls her down by the neck. The jump ball's going to be called. That's excessive. And not only did Alexis Cashier come in, as you mentioned, and lock up a blue dragon by the neck, after the whistle was blown, she slammed her head to the ground. No call. Here comes the inbound. Got up and good. Stewart's able to cash it in. Stewart came from that weak side. And this is a perfect time out for John yeah. Anches because he wants an explanation. Rather than wait 23 seconds and get it at halftime, he wants to know right now why three officials had eyes on that play and did nothing she about put it. Her, put her arm around and yanked her down when the whistle was being called. It's 37 to 35. It is a timeout. We're going to keep it here with 22.9 to go in the second quarter of play. And you're exactly right. John specifically called that timeout to say, hey, I want an explanation of why that was called. The jump ball was already called, but the, right at the end of it, she had her arm around her neck and just pulled it down. What concerns me is the intent because Alexis Cashier initially went for the neck and then, then held on to it yeah. long enough, as you just indicated, to throw her down after the whistle. You know how John Anches is with timeouts. He likes to keep them in his pocket. 
So something very meaningful just happened. That tells you the impact of that play for him to take now, a timeout here. I saw it. You saw it. Coaches saw it. The guys in the stripes need to see it, too, because that was excessive. 37-35. Hudson up by two. The Osho puts full court pressure on the Blue Dragons. Second quarter of play. Bradshaw behind the back dribble. Gets it across to Kramer. Over top side now to Schemmel. Schemmel, their ball hawking out front. Putting two on the ball every time they can. Bradshaw back on the outside. Schemmel. Schemmel takes it down low underneath. Gives it to Mickens. Layup. Good. Mickens with the basket as Hutchinson converts. And Hutch will go in at halftime by four. 39 to 35. Good ball game here in Chanute tonight. Hope you can... Enjoy it on both the stream as well as on Eagle Radio Network, KHUT in Hutchinson. 39-35, a four-point lead for the Blue Dragons at halftime. We'll be back in two minutes. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Incorporation, Hog Wild Pit Barbecue, and by Man Wyatt and Rice LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. For over 15 years, Erickson Custom Building has designed, built, and remodeled homes and commercial projects in Central Kansas. Whether you're looking to replace a deck, wanting to build an addition, or remodel your kitchen, our customers receive individualized attention, quality craftsmanship, and exceptional customer service from. A 39-35 at halftime, just was entertained by both the Blue Dragon Lady, uh, Dragon Dolls as well as Neo Show's dancers. Did a little routine jointly together. That was good to see. A good first half of play. Lots of turnovers, but a good competitive game at 39-35. Again, on top are the Blue Dragons rallying back after being down by six to come back and to take the four-point lead. It's time for the medicine shop. In-game castle brought to you by the Little White Castle at... 14th and Main, again, coming up on the Medicare Part D deadline on the 7th of December. So if you have not yet decided on what plan you want to have or decide to change a plan, stop by, let them put in your medication into the computer, and it'll tell you what the best plan in Kansas is for you and try to save you some money. Again, a medicine shop, also a good place to get your flu shots as the flu is going around and uh, shingle shots and several other pneumonia shots as well as Lacey has the softest touch. 14th of Maine is the location. It's been serving Hutchison for many, many years and do a great job as well. Darren, what did the numbers look like? The Blue Dragons owned the boards 28-17 to against a team that is leading the conference in rebounds per game. The Panthers averaged 61 and a half. Probably not going to make it there tonight after a first half of only 17. Even with the 11 rebound advantage, the Blue Dragons have not capitalized on the offensive boards. Twelve offensive rebounds, only four second chance points to show for it. For Neosho, shot lights out in that first half from beyond the arc. Had a couple of players hit three-pointers who are only shooting 18 and 11 percent on the year, respectively. Since then, since shooting 42.9 percent from beyond the arc, the Panthers went cold in that second quarter of play. Just one for eight in freezing 12.5% to even things back out to their season average, 26 
50.7% from the three-point line for Neosho. The Panthers had no scorers in double digits, but had three players get it done with Kelsey Hens with eight, Alexis Kasher with eight, and Jessica Jones with seven. For the Blue Dragons, a couple already in double-digit scoring, Dejanae Roebuck and Jada Mickens, both made a living underneath the basket there after the three-court and half-court pressures were broken. When the Blue Dragons were able to get the ball to Roebuck and Mickens, they were able to score underneath or at least get chances at the line. Mickens finishes with 13 in the first half, Dejanae Roebuck 11, and Roebuck is 7 for 9 from the free throw line. Milan Schimmel did not get the start tonight, but she has six points for the Blue Dragons and six rebounds to go with it. The only part of her game where she's struggling right now is from beyond the arc, where she is just one for three. The Blue Dragons, as far as points off the turnovers, six more than Neosho. It's nine to three in that category right now. That's how the Blue Dragons took that late four-point advantage. I want to touch quickly on that Alexis Kasher situation. The explanation that the Dragon coaches got from the officials was that they didn't see it. There were just too many bodies to see if anything happened. They didn't think that there was contact. You and I had a perfect yeah, angle. There, there was and, and excessive I'm not mean, contact. I don't mean to be critical, but it was, a, it was a situation where the play was over. You, you heard the whistle already, and all of a sudden the arm came around the neck. It was already around the neck, but then it kind of viced it a little bit and brought it down very, very abruptly, I should say. And I'm not trying to make bad situation worse, but uh, you and I saw the same thing and reacted the same way. Well, you want to watch that player, I think. Uh, hopefully that's the takeaway here is that they watch Alexis Kasher because she went after the neck and the head area before the whistle and then went for it after the whistle with a WWE move, if we're being honest. <laughs> yes, it's, yes, and it's so not only do you want to keep an eye on that player in particular, keep things away from being chippy, my concern is you have a dual coverage area down there in the paint, so at least two officials have eyes on it. By the time there was the jump ball, you had all three officials with eyes on the ball. You're always taught the bodies get to the floor. You must know how they got there. So one, if not two, should have known how those bodies got to the floor. And then you have a third trail official coming in at the end who had a chance to have a look at it. see extracurricular activity, yeah. When nobody gets it, that's a problem, especially as far as the second half of this game is concerned. Yeah, exactly, and John, I'll just call time out to, to get an explanation, which is a good thing to do. Again, a good job done by the Blue Dragons to rally back. They trailed by as many as six. Neosho just pouring it to them with, with breaks and backdoor plays and uh, shooting up from outside the arc like crazy. Yes, they shoot a low percentage, but they shoot so many that sooner or later you're going to get hot and get streaky. And right now, Neosho only trails the Dragons by four. But give Hutchinson credit. Crawled back in this thing and was able to come uh, back and uh, take the lead and now have that lead with the, with by four at happened at the 52nd mark. Neosho led by as many as five. I thought it was six. Actually, it was five. And that was at the second quarter to 822 mark. So, that's a good second quarter to rally back and, and uh, take the lead at halftime, 39 to 35. We'll take a two-minute timeout. By the way, that was the medicine shop in-game capsule brought to you at a little white castle at 14th of Maine. Rick Stone and the gang, hey, go in and also look at the at the local Hutch uh, vendor part that they have on that east wall. Uh, you can see some things that only you can get uh, in, in Hutchison, such as just some great uh, uh, salsas and some different mixes, uh, plus the Yonkin snack sticks and the summer sausage. They have it there displayed for you, and you're able to pick it up. Rick does that free for the local vendors that have stuff there, not to mention the dollar wall that they have over on the east side. Stop in to see them. Again, the medicine shop, 14th of Maine, a great little place to take your business, and you'll be glad you did. 39-35 at halftime, Hutch up by four. We'll take a two-minute timeout. We'll be back with more right after this. Just when you thought you were done with taxes, you got a letter from the IRS. Maybe you're being audited, or maybe you filed for an extension and still need some tax help. We at h &R Block are there for you. We don't stop working on April 15th. Our tax professionals are here to help you year-round. So if you have tax issues you need a hand with, even if h &R Block didn't do your taxes the first time around, visit our offices in Hutchinson, Lyons, or Ellsworth and let our experienced tax professionals help get you every dollar you deserve. The Rothy family name has always been connected to serving the Hutchinson community. And you can expect the same kind of high-quality service when you visit Rothy Family Flooring. They believe you deserve to be treated like family. So they've invested in their own talented and trustworthy installers to lay your floors. No outside contractors will ever knock on your door if Rothy works for you. Let them show you their expansive selection of name brand flooring and trust your home to the best. Rothy Family Flooring, 325 North Main, Hutchinson. 
we understand. You can't plan ahead for an illness or injury, yet you'd really like same-day treatment. That's why Prairie Star offers walk-in clinic services with a responsive medical staff to care for you and your family. Yes, we want to be your medical home. Welcome to Prairie Star Health Center and walk-in clinic, whether you have insurance or not. 30th and K61 in Hutchinson. We all like to save money when and where we can, right? You can do that every day at Salt City Pawn and Jewelry. Hi, this is owner Paul Phillips inviting you to stop in and say hi to our friendly staff. And while you're here, check out over 3,000 square feet of great merchandise priced at outstanding values. We don't have to offer huge sale prices for one day only when we do that on a daily basis. Save big over retail prices on firearms, electronics, guitars and amps, name brand tools, video games, jewelry, and more. See us at 916 East 4th and Hutch, just east of 4th and Severance. We're proud to be alumni and supporters of all Blue Dragon Athletics. Welcome back to the O Show. 39-35 at halftime. Hutchison with the lead. And Darren, I understand we still have a little bit of crackling in the in the stream on the Blue Dragon Sports Network, but it seems to me like two years ago we had some dickens of a time getting our audio up, so there must be something about the gymnasium here as well up into the booth up above. But uh, Yeah, with all those improvements, that showtime leaving still a little bit of a crackle. <laughs> And an echo. Yep. Some games tonight. Uh, we'll look around the league here in just a little bit. But uh, your assessment on the first half of play? Well, the Blue Dragons have done a great job of getting the ball into the front court. It's just something happens once that ball gets within 15 feet of the basket. That's where the Blue Dragons have suffered many of those 14 turnovers. And what's been interesting is the same is true then for Neosho. I think at this point, though, Neosho kind of cooled off from beyond the arc. I'd be really surprised if this team hit a slew of threes in this second half. I mean, I'm not saying it won't happen and can't happen. I'm just saying it's unlikely for a team that shoots about 25% on the year. It was an aberration what you saw in that first quarter of play for the Panthers. So for the Blue Dragons, now once you get that ball where you want it, you've, you've broken the pressure, you've got the ball down on the block where you want it, now make that solid post move and give yourself a good look at the basket. You really want to rely on Mickens and Roebuck underneath to score the baskets like they did in the first half, and that's going to open up those three-point opportunities where the Blue Dragons can thrive on the outside then and polish this one off. In other games in the conference right now, it is a Coffeyville ladies leading Barton 30-25. to I actually saw the Barton bus as we were coming down here. Butler's taking on Dodge this evening. Colby and Cloud uh, County in action as well. Those are both on the road. Butler's at Dodge and Cloud is at Colby. Again, here it is 39-35 at intermission. Hutchison on top of Neosho. Cali and Pratt are locking up tonight as well, along with uh, Seward is at Allen County. So a couple teams pretty close. And Northwest uh, uh, Kansas Tech is at Independence. Independence 25-15. The score we have in there. Non-league uh, encounter Garden City taking on Trinidad State Junior College. Trinidad leading 16 to 15 this evening. There is one game tomorrow night at Heston College in action. Of course, they're part of the NJC, uh, KJCCC, and also uh, coming up a uh, LaBelle will be in action this Friday. All the rest of the games coming in on Saturday. We'll run down that slate of those games before too long. So some big games. We'll try to pass on some little bit of scoring coming your way in just a little bit as well. So. Appreciate you tuning in. We're going to take another two-minute timeout, set the stage for the second half of play. You score at halftime. Hutchison 39, the Osho Panthers, Lady Panthers 35. Darren and I'll be back in two minutes. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Low Incorporation, Hog Wild Pit Barbecue, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. This is Carter Fowl, president of Hutchinson Community College. I invite you to join us this winter as the proud tradition of Blue Dragon men's and women's basketball continues at the historic Hutchinson Sports Arena. Both teams are favorites in the tough Jayhawk Conference, so you won't want to miss any of the action. Find the schedule at BlueDragonSports.com, like us on Facebook, and follow Blue Dragon Sports on Twitter. As always, go Blue Dragons. 
RCAT is now part of a regional transportation partnership with Sedgwick County Transportation and Wichita Transit. We are working together to provide rides to Wichita and back on Tuesdays. Wichita Transit has fixed route and paratransit service available within the city. Round trip costs range between $19 and $27. Advanced registration with RCAT is required. RCAT is first come first serve general public transportation. Call 694-2913 for details. No time to fix breakfast? Just call us at Anchor Away 662-3100 and we'll have it ready for you. Choose from our selection of breakfast burritos, biscuits, or one of our five different complete breakfast plates. Breakfast from 7 to 10.30, Monday through Saturday. If you missed us for breakfast, we're here for lunch and dinner, too. Pick up your favorite Mexican dinner or take some home for the family. We're open till 9. That's Anchor Away drive through Carryout, and Catering under the Water Tower at b and Adams in Hutchinson, 662-3100. Well, welcome back. 39-35, Hutchinson with the lead as we start this third period of play. And it will be Blue Dragon basketball as we start this third period. Hutchinson with a lot of turnovers, too many turnovers in that. 14. Uh -huh. You said the, the mark was 12. They mark exceeded 12. quota. Yeah.
if you let them. Free throw toss is up and good. Ogle got both of them. That one had to talk its way down. But it's a two-point dragon lead of 42-40 to 40 now. Panthers are 4-8. and eight, But I looked at their schedule. There's a steal. Bradshaw comes out with it. Bradshaw all the way in. Puts it up and scores a tight job by Tia Bradshaw. Her first points in the Hutch lead is four again. I looked at their scores. I knew when they had 99 on Redlands that they were going to be a scoring team. Birch on the outside. She'll gun and miss. Battle for the board. Rebound cleared underneath by Neosho. And then a foul underneath call is going to be called. Shot did not go down, but they will be shooting two. And at the line will be Casher. 7.51 to go in the third quarter of play. 44-40, Hutchison lead is at four. Free throw toss off, it's marked by Casher. Weird delivery on her free throw there. Young ladies out of Irvington, Alabama. She doesn't put a true backspin, and she doesn't put a true side spin on it. Oh, Somewhere in between. It? Yeah, a little bit. Kind of shove there. Look at the flip. Shot up missing. Rebound cleared out there by Ogle. Her hands even cross a little bit when she shoots it. There's a drive. Ogle banged in right into the player. A blocking foul call. Let's see if Abby's going to be all right. Boy, she hit the turf hard. Bass going to be called on Birch, and Birch is solid. That will be her second. She banged into Birch. And I mean banged in the birch. You can play off of that if you want to. Banged into a tree. That was one of those where she was. She, she was just standing there, and I don't even know that birch saw Ogle coming. She didn't move any, I tell you that. And the only reason it's a foul on the defense is that Abby already had head and shoulders past birch by the time they contacted at the hips. Free throws. Another one's up. She's hit six in a row now. Abby Ogle with all six of her points coming from the foul stripe. And it's a six-point dragon lead at 46-40. Three-pointer by a shot put up by Augustine. Ball out of bounds. It'll go over to the Blue Dragons. They will have it. We had Abby Ogle on Dragon Talk not too long ago at the polo. And she is a funny kid. Real dry sense of humor. Fun to be around. They had some, uh, she's out of Baldwin City, Kansas, which, of course, Baker University's there. Ask her about that. And she always, they always play Paola out of bounds. Stephanie Osho, turnover goes against the Panthers. Their arch rival was Paola and won a state championship this last year. Up to court comes Neosho. That turnover is against Hutchison, excuse me. Number 16. Feet down low blocks. Mickens with the block. Ball goes out of bounds. And the last touched off of Mickens. And that's one thing we were talking about in the first half. We were talking about Kimbrough swiping through. You notice the approach Mickens takes there. Just get the hands up. Get in between the offensive player and the basket. And make it hard for them to shoot over you. Deep corner right. Three-pointer up. Missing badly. Rebound ran down by Bradshaw. Hutchinson basketball with seven to go in his third period. Leading it by six. Opportunity now to, to step it up a little bit. Kramer has it. The ball glanced off Mickens. Here goes the Roebuck. She'll gun and miss. Mickens in there trying to get the rebound. Put it out there by Chrissy Brown and Neosho. Neosho on the run. This has been a, a dog fight today. Or tonight, I should say. The feed, feed down the low block. Stolen away by Kramer. Here comes Hutchinson. Long pass to Bradshaw. Deflected right in the hands of a Neosho player. Boland comes up with it. Up the court now. Here comes Neosho. Underneath they go, shot up missing, rebound underneath, shot up by Chrissy Brown, it's good. Brown finally gets the frustration and gets it up and in. She has five and it's 46-42. Hutchinson lead is cut down to four. Feet down low, wide open corner shot put up by Mickens. Nope, not there. Rebound, Ogle, she goes down but no foul called. Here's Bradshaw, she'll knife in between two. Can't get it to go, but she will shoot free throws. What a strong offensive rebound by Abby Ogle to give the Blue Dragons another opportunity. So shooting two will be Bradshaw. 6.06 to go in this third period of play. Bradshaw's free throw toss is off its mark, no good. Here comes substitution Kimbrough in, Schemmel in. 
Go ahead. Mapasua will come in for Bradshaw shoots and shoots. The frustration started for the Blue Dragons offensively when a ball reverse would have gotten a wide open Sarah Kramer in the corner, and everyone saw it except for the players on the court. Then you go into back to back turnovers by these teams. Bradshaw's free throw is good, 47 42. Hutchison now with the lead of five. Bradshaw will get a break. Here comes Stewart up the court. She checked back in for Neosho. She'll bring it up. Angle to the left side. Now back to the right. Mabasu on her. Illegal pick. It's going to go against Neosho. New face in the lineup is Jordan Childs. She's out of Fort Worth. She had just checked in. Picks up the personal foul. And that started. There were a couple of moving screens by a couple of players on the Panthers that possession. That throws it away. Up to the corner, Mapasua thought somebody was streaking there. Ends up being a long turnover against the Blue Dragons. Good student section here for Neosha. Great representative of Hutchison fans here tonight. Lots of parents and fans thrown throughout the whole bleachers on that far side. Stewart will bring it up. I don't know what direction that is. I got turned around coming into the college. <laughs> All on the outside top. Stewart has it left wing. They're across from us. As oh, there you go. Stewart kind of fell down a little bit, but got the pass away before the travel. There's a drive and a foul called. Foul's going to be called against Tinney. Oh, Sh- Shemmel, excuse me. Shemmel will pick up the first one. That'll be her second. At the line will be Jessica Jones shooting free throws. Free throw toss is up and good. Pretty good free throw shooter. Three for three here tonight. 85% free throw shooter on the season. Queen City, Texas. Be down around the Houston area. We'll shoot a second one. Free throw toss. This one's good. Forty-seven forty-four. Hutchison lead is cut down a little bit. Here's Mapasua across the timeline. Ball knocked into the backcourt. Roebuck gets it back and brings it up. And then a foul in the backcourt is going to be called. It's going to be on Stewart. She'll pick up the personal. That'll be only her first. But the problem is it's a 15 foul against the Oso. So Roebuck will sh- go back and shoot free throws. This is where she's lived tonight. We mentioned her last six points have come from the line. Robot spins the ball, gets set, free throw tosses up and good. She will shoot the second one. 48-44, the lead is four for the Blue Dragons of Hutchinson. Probably can hear Phil Anderson setting to my left. Free throws up and good, got that one. Shooter's roll right there, Darren. Felt the touch and shot it with a nice soft touch down and in. Whoop, they got it turned around. Got it completely turned around. Should be 48 to 44. Here's the steal. Blue Dragons bring it up. Long pass up the court. Knocked the way out of bounds. And Schemmel threw a really not advised pass right there. Luckily, it goes off of the Osho. 49-45. Hutchison up by four. Well, it was not frustrating enough between these coaches. They have 35 turnovers out here. It's the fact that most of them have come back to back. Ball on the top. Schemmel has it. Pass from Mapasua. Schemmel goes down low, lays it up, and a foul called before the shot. But it won't matter. It'll be a two-shot foul coming. Foul's going to be charged on Bolin. Bolin will pick up her third. So at the line will be Schemmel to shoot two. Schemmel street throws up and missing. Milan Schemmel. Before that, she was three out of four. Substitution. That one's up and good. Schemmel was six second half point, uh, first half points. Now she has seven. 50 44, Hutchinson. Neosho works it around the outer perimeter. Not throwing up those threes quite as much. There was a travel again, but it wasn't called. Out top now to Stewart. Left side. A whip it inside. Kimbrough got a hand on it. Ball knocked away. Last touch off of Ty. Here's Hens in the back of the lineup for the Osho. 4.38 to go in the third. And Bowling will take a place. Yeah. 
to think for the Blue Dragons here is with 4.38 left in the third quarter, they need to kind of take advantage of getting the ball to the hoop and creating contact because every foul from here on out sends you to the line. Ball comes in, Kimbrough reaches over and a foul of goal against the big 6-4 girl. Ty Kimbrough picks up the personal. She's that tendency to want to reach for it. That's her second. Yeah, Not a shooting situation. Just needs to get comfortable with knowing she's much taller than most players she'll face and just kind of get in front of them. Transferring from Northwest Florida, there's a jump ball called the possession will be Hutchinson's way. As Stewart came and got it, but then tied up by the Blue Dragons. So came from Northwest Florida, transferred in. Then uh, last year, right before the national tournament there, we're working out at Texas Tech and hurt her leg. There's a bad pass and a turnover. Neosho comes up with it. Had to have surgery. She's rehabbed nicely. Jumper up, missing, rebound, fought for. Van Ant comes out with it. Hutchinson bring it on the run. Van Ant on the right side. Chemel, top side left. Mapasua rolls to her right. Dragons up by six now. Had a lead at halftime as well. Led it by four. So they've increased it by two here in the quarter. Here's Schemmel across the top to the foul strike. She'll shoot and hit. Nice little shot. She's going to be a good one. Milan just has a whole lot to learn. Feed down low right side. Layup not there, but a foul call. Kimbrell will pick up another one. And on Kimbrell, that'll be her third. Going back to Schimmel, she just found that sweet spot. She got by one of the defenders in the zone, found that little window before the off defender could close it, and got herself a nice little 15-foot jumper. The lead is eight for Hush. Make that seven as the free throw falls through. Tinney will check in. Roebuck will check out. So right now, rolling the dice a little bit, keeping Kimbrough in there. They rolled the dice with Roebuck, and that works. Free throw toss. This one's good. So the lead cut to six again, 52-46. Hutchison, Schemmel, drives left, goes up, lays it up and in. Schemmel with 11. Nice little take advantage of the situation there. I think the ocean is starting to lay off. There's a travel call, double dribble is what they're actually going to call. Trying just to do too much is Stigger. Haley Stigger is a good, good player, but she just seems to be trying to do a little bit too much. 19 turnovers now for both of these teams. Ball in the hands of Tinney, who's back in there. Now Mapasua. Mapasua out of Australia. Top side right. That's works around the outside. They whip it down low. Vanette head fakes. Goes around the defender in the Kimbrough layup. Good. Nice job of just handing it off underneath. Looks like Aaron Rodgers there for a second with a handoff. Was able to get it in and out. Ball turned over, it'll go off in the Osho out of bounds. Which, by the way, Green Bay's looking for a new coach. Really? Mike, Mike Sherman, you didn't know that? They fired McCarthy? Oh, yeah, McCarthy, I mean. That was way back when I said Mike Sherman. Yeah. They fired McCarthy, who had done a pretty good job there. There's a timeout on the floor. Dragons up by 10, 56-46. We'll take a quick half-minute timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. If getting a new iPhone is on your wish list, then wish no further. At Next Tech Wireless, all smartphones, including the new iPhones, are 50% off. You can save over $350 on your new iPhone and even trade in your old phone for more credit. Have multiple lines? That's even better because your third, fourth, or even fifth line will get you unlimited data free for a year. Next Tech Wireless has more than 50 store locations to serve you. Switch today and start saving. Certain restrictions apply. Phone guard required. 56-46, a 10-point Dragon lead with 2.57 to go in the third. Yeah, regarding Green Bay, did you know that he was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but graduated in 87 from Baker University, was also a grad assistant at Fort A. State before he ended up locking in with the Chiefs for a few years as well, and now has been a head coach for quite some time up in Green Bay. Well, I remember when I was at the University of Kansas, his daughter was going there, and she was in one of the sororities, so he was one of those guys that would make a rare appearance and oh. cause a stir. People would talk about it, and uh, I think he paid for a lot of good things for that sorority that his daughter was in. I imagine he did. That was probably around the same time that he was with the Chiefs as a 
in a special capacity. Hutchison basketball here. See if they can close out this third pretty strong. They lead it by 10 right now. Taking advantage with Kimbrough inside a little while ago. Here's outside that edge. She gets a good look and shoots it up and in. She had her feet set and knocked it down. John and I talked about that the other night as well. Contact made, blocking foul call. This is going to be in Napasula. She'll pick up the personal foul. Mapasua a little upset she didn't draw the charge, but that's such a tough place to it draw is. it when you're just crossing half court. That'll be only her first. I mean, the burden is on you as the defender to get set. So many of those calls, a higher percentage, are blocking calls that far from the hoop. Free throw by Christy Brown is up and good. She has six. That's a 10-point lead down to nine, make it eight. And she converts on both of them. 235 remaining to go in the Third period of play. Tinney. Schemmel. Left side. Vanette. Three on its way. Off. No good. Rebound underneath. Tinney. Basket. Good. Right place. Right time, Darren. Fifteenth offensive rebound for the Dragons. That was a strong side one right there. Put it up and in. 61-48. The drive. Shot not there. Hutchinson with the lead and a foul now. And Kimbrough picks up the foul. Rolling the dice a little bit. That is her fourth. At the line will be, we've been pronouncing hands because that's what we were told. And the PA just called her Hines. Treat those up and good. Well, I know that the gal I talked to went into the locker room before the game and, and asked, asked her. her. So we know that it's Kelsey Hands. A lot of PA announcers go by the theory of, well, if they haven't corrected me, I must yeah, be right. Must be. <laughs> we have one of those. Treat those up and good. I don't know. I check and double check and triple check. Fall off of the umbo. Might not know that Darren is the PA announcer for the Blue Dragons with football, basketball, and other. There's a foul call. A uh, kickball. A kickball, excuse me. It's going to be inbound left side baseline. You would have seen it, but Ty is standing right in front exactly. of you. Exactly. And John Osgis, both are screening me out right now. Inbounding will be left side for the Blue Dragons. Napasua slaps the ball. Trying to get it in. Farmer does come in. Right side basket. Up and good. Emmy wide open around the screen to score it. Two minutes to go in the third. Lay up at the other end. It's up and good. Scoring it was Augustine. Contact made. Foul call. This one's going to go against Yosho. That'll be her third. Actually, it's on Casher. That'll be her third. At the line, will be left Van Ed. Is she going to be okay? That was a pretty good hit right there. That was. Good job by the officials checking on her, though, to make sure. It's set. Free throw toss. Office mark. No good. What I like about Van Ed is uh, you saw in a couple of back-to-back -back possessions here just a few minutes ago, she created that shot for Tiana Kimbrough underneath. She came back down the next possession after getting the assist and drilled a three. Free throw toss, Vanette. Bags it, good. Seven points for Vanette. Four of those in the second half of play. 64-52 now, Hutch up by 12 with a minute and 48 to go. A good third quarter for the Blue Dragons. They scored 18 in the first, 17 in the second. And I'm referring to quarters. Angle dribble right side. That's Childs. Takes it all the way to the corner right. Back outside. It's going away with Blue Dragons. And then mishandling the ball was Mickett. Just could not get to it. And out of bounds it goes over to Neosho. Another turnover against the Blue Dragons. That's kind of that tennis action that we've seen. You see such a good play from one team to force a turnover. And then that player immediately turns it back. Here comes the inbounds, close to a five count. They lob it in finally to get it into Birch inside. She kicks it on the outside. Three pointer good from outside. Shot up and wide, good by Augustine. Augustine, excuse me. 64 55. The score is now a 30 second timeout coming your way. We'll be back in a half a minute. 
Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Superstores. In the month of December, we will be partnering with the Hutchison branch of Toys for Tots. We will be collecting new and unwrapped toys. We will begin collecting Monday, December the 10th through Saturday, December the 15th. For each donation, we will enter that person into a drawing for some great prizes. So please join us in supporting your local Toys for Tots and come see us at 1100 East 30th or online at MidwestSuperstore.com. 126 to go, third quarter action. Glenn Grunwald and Darren Dunn, glad to have you along tonight on Country's Hutchison Country Station, KHUT in Hutchison, as well as KWBW, 1450 AM and 98.5 FM. Also, don't forget about HutchPost.com and the Blue Dragon Sports Network as well. Oh, they break the press. They kick it on the outside into the hands of Schemmel. Back to Bradshaw. Hutchison was primarily... I uh, see Pickett's in there now. It's going to say a guard set. Here's Schemmel, right side. Kicks to the left side. Over can't handle the turnover. That was a rough angle, Darren, from baseline to corner. Well, she was kind of hoping Ogle was going to be standing still, and she wasn't completely in the corner, so it was thrown to a spot she thought Ogle would be, but Ogle was not there yet. Lead is nine for Hutch. Near steal. Contact made. Ogle with the foul. Ogle had the steal just about made them banged into Augustine. That'll be her third. So Ogle in a little bit of foul trouble. Augustine headed to the line for the first time. She hit that three moments ago going into the timeout. And it was one of those perfect storms. The pass was placed perfectly to her. She had it right where she wanted it to be. Didn't have to readjust and nail it. Hit the front end but missed the second one. And now with Hutchinson brings it up with an eight-point lead. Ogle dishes it over. Underneath the branch, oh, she goes up strong and draws the foul. I think it's on Casher. And if I'm J.J. Davis, I'm a little upset about that because I want to know what it is she could have done differently because she was just standing there in wait. And maybe the ball even hit her rather than the foul, you know. All right, there's a timeout on the floor, and the coaches are going to talk with the referee. John On just steps up, and now they're going to bring in J.J. Davis, and they're going to chat a little bit about the call here, and I think it has to do with this is the way it's going to be called, and that's the way it's going to be. And they will discuss that, and both teams with a momentary timeout, and they'll come back and fill lanes to get set to shoot the free throws. What you got, there? Well, we're going old school. The old school days of two-man or two-woman, two-person mechanic officiating. Something happened with the official John Adams we've talked about a little bit in this contest. Uh, if you watched the Netflix series Last Chance to he was featured in there as a football official. He comes to Hutchinson quite a bit to officiate football and, and he's basketball. He's not here. And, yeah, he has an injury there without him, at least for the time being. All right. Free throw toss is up and good. By Bradshaw, I thought maybe it was something having to do with the play or maybe the coaches both being on the officials because it's been a hotly contested situation like that. 65-56, Hutchinson with the lead. Can make it a 10-point lead again with the free throw here for Bradshaw. So you're right. They're going to have to go with the two-man crew. So you're saying I should have brought my stripes. Yeah, maybe something. You, could you, still, you, still, did, you yeah. still, you still, yeah, you could have been, I guess. The one official looked over to Travis Kirk and said, hey, you could come out here and help us. Free throw top, up and good. So Bradshaw got them both. She has five, and the Dragons have a 10-point lead at 66-56 with 40 seconds to go in the third. Turnover on Chrissy Brown. She turns it over. Hutchinson now with an opportunity to add to that 10-point lead. You mentioned how one official has probably been officiating since, or as long as Rusty long time. has been calling. You know how long it's probably been since he's done a two-man game? Probably so. Tom Smith was his... Dad was a football coach in Hutchinson for a long time. Matter of fact, one of the scholarships in football that we have is named after his father. All on the outside, right? Oval. Seven on the shot clock. Schemmel gets double teamed and turns the ball over in the corner. And Asher comes out with eight seconds to go in the third. Schemmel trying to get it back at half court, guarding fiercely. Still in half court. They'll shoot up the three. It's no good. And 
the end of the third is here. Hutchinson with a 10-point lead at 66-56. One more quarter to go, 10 more minutes. We'll be back in one minute. Hutch with a 10-point lead. Looking for a practical Christmas gift? How about a top-of-the-line Panasonic upright vacuum from the Back Lady Donna Pitzer? Donna is rolling back prices 30 years to 1988. Your price for one of these top-of-the-line vacuums is $299. That's a $200-plus savings. This vacuum comes with all the onboard attachments and includes a two-year warranty. Donna also will gift wrap your vacuum and deliver in time for Christmas absolutely free. Donna says Merry Christmas with the best price in 30 years on a new Panasonic vacuum. Call Donna Pitzer the Bag Lady at 663 6-6-3-4- 322. It's football season when the weather is warm one day and cold the next. Stay ahead of cold and flu season by drinking plenty of liquids, getting enough rest, and keeping your hands sanitized. Come see the friendly folks at Ashcraft Pharmacy, your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy, for over the counter medications to help alleviate symptoms. And if you need a prescription, we offer free mail out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. 66-56, Hutchinson with a 10-point lead as we head to the fourth. The best quarter for both teams, Hutch scored 27 points. Neosho, 21, 18 points off of turnovers for the Blue Dragons. We're even at 22 turnovers apiece between the two squads which is quite amazing. Rebound-wise, though, Hutchinson getting it done there, 36-23, to 23, Darren. Such a rapid pace on those turnovers. We're seeing about seven from each team a quarter. Hutchinson shooting 39.1% for the game. Neosho, uh, just a little bit below that at 34.8%. Neosho's possession as we start this outside, and the ball knocked away. It will be retained by Neosho. And that's where the two-person mechanic comes into play here because you have your lead official who now has to cover that extra boundary and has to come out even higher or at least get a better ankle when the ball is on our side of the court. Ball comes in, knocked away by Ogle. Here comes Jimmy Ogle for Hutchison with the drive. Lays it up in this foul. Stewart, a must foul or she was going to score two. And Abby will have to go to the line though and turn him the hard way. Maybe not at the hard way if you count how she was hacked on that foul. Abby will shoot the free throw. Tosses up and good. She's making it look easy. Seven for seven from the line. Uh, town probably close to when you're in college. You probably went down to Baldwin City a couple times. Free throw tosses up and good. Had a roommate who had a brother that actually went to Baker. Tom Hedrick, still the voice of the Baker Wildcats. Tom Hedrick. The dean of broadcasters. There's an offensive foul call. They're going to whip this to this on a bird. J.J. Davis is going bananas. He was one more stomp, one more evil look away from the technical there. Wow, did he get fired up. And it's the hook. It's not the contact below the waist on that. It's the elbow that's thrown by Birch that gives her the offensive foul. Oval. Back on top. Bradshaw, they'll pull it back away. Hutchinson, 68-56, lead it. Outside Oval. Off to Bradshaw. Back on the outer perimeter to the right side. Flash to Roebuck in the lane. She'll drive right, lay it up. No, nope, not there. Birch there with the rebound. And the Osho has the basketball, trailing it. 68-56 with nine to go. The drive down. There's a foul call, the push foul. Two shots coming the way of Neosho. Such a tough play for Dejanae Roebuck as she picks up her fourth. She was in man-to-man defense with Hens, and she had to run through Bradshaw and Shim to try and catch up. And by the time she got there, it was too late. Great to toss off. It's marked no good, though, on a miss by Hens. And he's set to shoot a second one. First free throw she's missed today. Yeah, she's she five was... for five before that. Free throw toss. Up and good. So she gets that one down. 16 points for her now. Over. Up the court. She'll bring it. Loose basketball on the floor. But a foul called underneath. Yes. No, they're just going to say kicking the ball. It will be Hutchison basketball with 8.46 to go. Blue Dragons with an 11-point lead with 8.46 remaining to go in this 
fourth quarter of play. Guys, action coming up at 7.30. Here's the pass into Tenney back outside. Ogle cuts across, lays it up, scores a nice little move by Ogle. Nifty move, but she angled across the lane and put it up off the glass. I like how she plays. All stolen away by Ogle. She anticipated the pass and got to her. She'll bring it down. She'll drop it in. She'll lay it up. She'll be fouled. Ogle will go to the line to shoot free throws, so she's had a good day there. In the pregame, we mentioned, or you did, how it was Ogle who kind of hit that three and it sent the spark. And I know the Blue Dragons already had a decent lead here, but this is what is allowing the Dragons to pull away is the play of Ogle. Free throws have been good. 11 points. She has scored five of her points here in the fourth period of play. Hutch now leading at 71 57. Free throw toss. The second one's good. 12 points for Ogle. And the lead is 72 57. Hutchinson. 10 of her 12 have come from the line. Drive by Brown. Basket good. And she's fouled. You see Brown took it in on the left side. Foul's going to be charged against. Bradshaw, that'll be her second. Brown's free throws up and comes out on a no good. Rebound cleared out though by Neosho. They have another opportunity. Long shot up and out of bounds. It goes air ball put up by Jessica Jones. It'll be Hutchinson basketball. Ogle reminds me of how she plays a somebody, and I can't, that has played for the Blue Dragons, and I just can't put a finger on it. But her style of play is similar there to thrown away by Tenney. And Hutchinson turns the ball over again. Chrissy Brown all the way down, lays it up and scores it. Brown's a solid player, Darren. Three the points for her. She's been the most consistent player for this team as well. 72-61, Hutchinson, a timeout on the court. Is it going to be a partial or a full? It will be a full one-minute break. We'll be back right after this. First National Bank is always open. We've made it easier than ever to conduct all of your banking from your smartphone, tablet, or laptop. You pick the location to get started, all via fnbhutch.bank. Apply for a loan or open an account over your lunch break or from the comfort of your own home. Electronic banking, everywhere you are. Get started at fnbhutch.bank. We wish you happy holidays and a very Merry Christmas from your friends at First National Bank. We're first for you. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Vernon Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Low Corporation, Hogwild Pit Barbecue, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholars 72-61, Hutchinson with the lead with 7.55 to go in his fourth period of play. J.J. Davis trying to get his team up, fired up to make a run at the Blue Dragons. Hutchinson trying to settle down a little bit. Those silly turnovers, Darren. Silly, my goodness, to the tune of 48 between these two teams. Yep, bunch of turnovers in this game. Hutchinson though, will have pressure on him. You know that's going to happen because the freshmen have cracked a little bit tonight. John on just called the timeout. Bradshaw bring it across the timeline. Now you have Schemmel right side. Tenney all the way to the left. Back out top Ogle. They're going to eat a little time and work it around and get a good shot. Schemmel to Ogle. Tenney on the near side right in front of us. Here's Mickens on the outside. Haven't heard from Mickens in a while. Jada back in the ball game. Schemmel drives right, loops it back to Mickens from the foul stripe. Shot up, rattling out, no good. Rebound cleared away by Neosho as they come out with it. They'll run it up quickly. Here comes Chrissy Brown. She crosses it over, takes it inside, misses the shot. Ogle with the rebound. That's going to bring it up. Ogle on the run. Ogle has Bradshaw on the right, squares up, shoots it herself off the back guard, no good. Mickens with the rebound. They'll reset it and set it up again. Got to eat a little clock. 7 on 9 to go. Right side, Ogle. Over to Schemmel, Schemmel right side. On the dribble, back to side Bradshaw, angle dribbles, left side to Vogel. 
Mickens flashes high. They don't get it to her. And Mickens back outside. Now to Schemmel. Shot clock at 10. Kick it right. Bradshaw, three arching high. Shot don't go. Won't go. And a rebound's going to be cleared out by Brown. The Osho on the run. She'll bring it down. Drives in. And a foul call on Schemmel. That's, the angle was coming from Schemmel. And Brown was taking it in. You knew something was going to happen. It ends up being a foul on Schemmel. Well, and you felt like Schimmel could have gotten there a little bit quicker and tried to cut it off for a potential block charge call. And instead, she wants to get there just in time to ride Brown by the hip. Brown at the line, trying to cut into that 11-point lead, and she will. It'll be a free throw for Brown that's good to make it 72-62. Steiger back into the contest. Free throw toss, off no good. Missed shot put in by Brown and Hutch with the rebound. The Dragons bring it up. Schemmel right side, pulls up, lobs at the Mickens, low post. Gets around it, his left side. Three-pointer put up in the corner by Oval, won't go. Rebound, 10, good! And she's fouled, got it up and in. She was not fouled, but a great rebound put back by Kenny is good. Go down the other way, shot not there. Schemmel with the rebound. Hutchinson leads by 12. Pressure in the backcourt. Timeout taken on by the Blue Dragons. I thought I was screened off. I actually thought the way the coaches reacted that she was fouled and got the end one. But nevertheless, a good job. We're going to keep it here. A 30-second timeout taken by the Blue Dragons. And a flurry of shots being put up now by the Osho. You know J.J. Davis is saying, we can't run much clock. we got to shoot, guys. We're down by 12. Yeah, that's where the biggest advantage comes here for the Blue Dragons because you notice, especially coming out of that last timeout, took took their time, the Blue Dragons did, to find an open shot. The 17-footer didn't go down for Jada Mickens, but the Blue Dra- Dragons got an offensive opportunity. Now, finally, with that Tenney play, you get a second chance point. That's where the Blue Dragons have struggled. Now with 17 offensive rebounds, only nine second chance points to show for it. All right, both teams talking things over. It will be Blue Dragon basketball. Here comes the inbound. Coming up the oval, turned over, bad pass. And coming up with it will be the Osho, and then we'll throw it away. Turnover 24 for the Dragons. Oh, man. Immediately into turnover 26. And probably the, the assists aren't there to offset that. You can put up with turnover sometimes if you've got the assist. Timeout, we will take a break this time. But 30 second timeout, we'll be back right after this. For over 15 years, Erickson Custom Building has designed, built, and remodeled homes and commercial projects in central Kansas. Whether you're looking to replace a deck, wanting to build an addition, or remodel your kitchen, our customers receive individualized attention, quality craftsmanship, and exceptional customer service from start to finish. Erickson Custom Building offers new construction and remodeling services in addition to commercial and insurance projects. Visit our website today at ericksoncustombldg.com. 6.06 to go. 34-22, 74-62. Blue Dragons on top. Glenn Grun run along with Darren Dunn, the double D. 74, 62, 50. There are 50 turnovers wow. in this game. And Hutchison will have the basketball recipients of the last turnover by Neo Show. Napasuo will bring the ball up. Pass comes over to Tenney. Napasua. Top side on the outer perimeter. Tinney hands it off to Ogle. Ogle will roll to her right side. Ball on the outer perimeter. Nickens comes out. Over to Van Ant. Van Ant out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Gets it into Mapasua. She rolls left, puts it up, doesn't get it, but the rebound put back by Tinney's not there. Foul call. No, there was not a foul call. You go down the other way, Neosha will bring the ball up. The drive down, shot not there, and a foul called this time against the Blue Dragons. We just saw exactly what you said was happening, Glenn, where the Blue Dragons are trying to find the best shot possible and kill some clock just to have Neosho turn around and have to hurry and try to put one in. Mickens picks up the personal. That'll be only her second. Rito's up and good by Brown. Ball teetered a bit. 
was able to finally go down. She has 13. Can cut it down to 10. With the free throw here. Mickens will come out. Kimbrough back in. Tenney will get a break. Tenney with a good second half. Six points. I thought she had to put back the second one. I actually thought she was clobbered, but they let her get away with it. Brown's free throw toss is up and good. She's hit a bunch in a row. I actually missed a little while ago. Here's Ogle. She'll drive in. Dumps it underneath to Kimbrough. Last touchdown of bounds off of the old show. Kimbrough had that ball just a little bit low. You'd love to see her with that six foot four frame. Keep that ball up by her chest. Keep it high. That's one place she struggled is finishing at the hoop. Mapasua will kick it in. Off of Roebuck and into the hands of a Neosho player. Neosho will bring it up. Got it where she needed to get it, but right off of Run right off the of Roebuck. Feed down low bucks underneath. Shot up and a foul called on Kimbrough. That'll be her fifth. And a basket one in. You wonder if they get this on Ogle. Might be. Could be. Let's check it. You're right. They are going to get it on Ogle. That'll be the fourth on Ogle. Free throw. Basket is good by Stigger. That's her first basket while well, the rest are free throws. She missed on the free throw attempt, and Hudson comes out with a rebound. 74-66, the lead is cut to eight now. At 12, Mapasua, five minutes to go in the half, in the th- fourth quarter. Five minutes remaining. Halfway through this fourth quarter play, Ogle, right side, Mapasua, three ball, won't go. Back for the board, though, Roba comes up with it and takes it away. Gets it away, no to Kimbrough, loose the basketball, foul held, and who are we going to call on the foul? Here we go on Stigger. That'll be her second. That'll be the fourth team foul, so not a shooting situation for the Blue Dragons. After Stula checks out, Bradshaw checks back in. 4.43 to go. Shot clock is at six. Are they going to leave it at that? JJ <laughs> Davis at half court, way out of the box, and no way. It was a foul, so it has to go back to 30, doesn't it, Darren? Well, did they actually report a foul, though? He was asking, JJ was asking if they the ball actually changed possession. I thought they called a foul on, on Stigger, but possibly not. Here comes the end now. They do put it back at 30. Ball comes into Bradshaw. And John just got a warning. Which is interesting because J.J. Davis was allowed to walk all the way to half court just a second ago to question that call about putting the shot clock up. And Blair right there was a foul on Steiger, which is why T.K. was yelling from the bench yeah. that there was a foul. John was just told by Bill Goldsmith, John, I've had enough. <laughs> Especially now being down to a two-person crew. If you've had enough, you've had enough. Here comes the inbound for the Blue Dragons with 28 on the shot clock, 441 on the game clock. Bradshaw will lob it in. Holds up, gets it in Van Epp. She sees an open shot, takes it, and doesn't get it, though. The Oscar with rebound. Brown will bring it up. An eight-point ball game with four and a half to go. Dragons with the lead. Brown drives in. Rejected it by Kimbrough. The confidence to go in there, knowing she has four fouls to play with records abandoned that she's played throughout this game. Her third block here tonight. She's talking some smack out there, let me tell you. Got to break one thing. The other night she had a well done snake. Got to break that when she's here in Kansas. That can't happen. Ball comes in just about a steal by Van Epp. Last touch out of bounds by her. It'll be re- retained by Neosho. You want her to have a little there. Is well, that what you're not saying? much. You're you're bit, not like a shoe, shoe sole or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Ball comes out top now with it. Hens. Drives in. Gets Kimber off the feet. Back to good by him. All right. 78, 74, 68. The lead is cut to six. Blue Dragons will take a little time. Gemmel out front, Bradshaw, 74-68, Hutchinson. The only thing I don't like about this, Darren, is don't play afraid to lose. Ball knocked away from called. 
This one's going to work against Yosho. And that's one thing you lost when you had Ogle go to the bench with her fourth foul because Ogle was kind of that spark that got this lead up to 12, which is where it was just two minutes ago and already cut in half. Timeout's going to be taken before we shoot free throws. 3.58 to go. Hutchison leading 74-68. We'll be back in a half a minute. Welcome to the Hutchinson Medicine Shop. With the emergence of big business, not only in pharmacy, but all industries, the Medicine Shop is proud to be a thriving local business in Hutchinson. We're so thankful to our customers in Hutchinson, Reno County, and Central Kansas for your support. In turn, we're proud to be a major sponsor of the Hutch High Salt Hawks, as well as other area high schools, the Blue Dragons, Chiefs, Royals, Jayhawks, and Wildcats. You support us, and the Hutchinson Medicine Shop supports local sports super super loud in here right now and 74 68 the reason for it the dragons lead has been cut a little bit there and the ocean trying to get back in it they are back in it only a few possession games 358 to go that's one thing you had the Osho out of this game and the blue dragons were in complete control and the Panthers have just kind of rolled that back down here within the last couple of minutes. Blue Dragons have not taken advantage of those offensive rebounds. 20 offensive rebounds in this game. Only nine second chance points to show for it. All right, with the basketball will be Hutchison with 3.58 to go. Blue Dragons will get instructions from Phil Anderson, John Anges, and others. And Josh really giving Phil an earful here. I think he wants to oh, man. see how far he can push this. And it might not be far. Free throw by Nene. It's up and good. Roebuck scores it. 14 for Roebuck. She's hit a bunch of free throws tonight. She's had eight in a row without scoring a field goal. Second opportunity coming from Roebuck. Free throw tosses up and good. Down about two key free throws right there, Darren. 15 points for Roebuck, 76-68. A little breathing room now for the Blue Dragons. 3.51 to go. Ball knocked away by Kimbrough, but she gets it back. Outside to Roebuck. Roebuck on the run. She'll take it to the ball and has a rejected go. And Ocho comes out with it. Here come the Panthers on the run. Left side, Cashier. Here's a free throw. A little travel call against Cashier. By Ryan, excuse me. Pins travel with the basketball. She can't believe it because she got fouled, which arguably she probably did, but it didn't matter because the way she got into the air was illegal. 3.31 to go. Blue Dragons basketball with 3.27 to go. Bradshaw on the outside, back out top. They'll work at left wing. Schemmel, feet down low to Roebuck. Roebuck puts a move on, puts it up and can't finish, gets it back, puts it up again. And rebound clear down there by Childs of the Osho. She'll loop it across, here comes Brown. Brown has got it on its way. And it put it down. 76 71, the lead is cut to five. Two possession game, Blue Dragons lead. Schemmel, over to Bradshaw. Outside, they're working left. Vanette, Vanette, over quickly. And they can play it good, count it. She's in his foul, and she'll go to the line to shoot one. Two stride by Kimbrough around that right side of the lane. The drive is the most important part in that because a lot of times Kimbrough is just posting up and trying to score underneath with a quick post move. She showed you there that she has some handles like a guard. Hens picks up her fourth. Substitution, Childs checks out. No show is substituting. Ogle will check back in. Kimbrough can make it 79-71, and she does. Kimbrough with the big basket. The three-point play by Kimbrough has given the Dragons an eight-point lead with 2.43 remaining. A look at Abby Ogle to keep this and push this lead as well. Simple advice from Coach Anderson to Abby Ogle. She went in. Don't foul. The drive underneath by Brown. I thought she traveled. Got the basket to go, though. 
the mound, puts it up and in. And that's where missing that extra official loses the opportunity to see that travel. Ogle with the basketball. They'll break it down. Ogle, a gun and miss. Bannett saves it. They're running into a no-show player. Now, Chris Brown's diving for it. Gets the ball all the way up. Wide open drive to the basket by Augustine. is good. 79-75. That lead cut back down to four. Now with two with seven to go. And a timeout taking on and the Blue Dragons. The Osho was dead in the water at 79-71. But they just now force the Dragons to take another timeout. It's a four-point ball game. We will be back to Chanute in 30 seconds. Parking lots and driveways can be expensive to install. This is Derek Fees. Let APAC Kansas Shears Division help you properly maintain these investments. Patching, crack filling, sealing, and striping are just some of the services we provide. Call APAC today at 620 620- 662-2112. Are you tired of your dusty or muddy driveway? APAC Kansas Shears Division is here to help. This is Derek Fees. Call us and ask us about our asphalt millings. If you are a do-it-yourselfer, arrange for pickup or delivery at your convenience. Call APAC today at 620-662-2112. Well, Darren, I thought that the Neo Show was dead in the water with an eight-point lead for the Blue Dragons. But boy, they hit that three and they got another deuce in the 79s. 75, the two-possession game, a four-point lead. That's been a flurry these last few moments. Keeping in mind, the Blue Dragons had a 15-point lead just six minutes ago. All right, Nene will inbound right in front of the Neil Show bench. J.J. Davis is an emotional coach, working hard. Sixth year here at Neil Show. Bradshaw across the timeline, Roebuck to Ogle. Ogle. Ball out of bounds and one ball for the left out of bounds. Abby reacted, but I saw it happen right in front of me, Darren. It went off her leg out of bounds. So a turnover against that for some of the minutes, 55 to go. That was a huge one. Turnover 27. Feed down low. Travel call. This one is against the Osho. Turnover City here tonight. Over 50 between the two teams. You just saw turnover 27 beside us and turnover 29 down there for the Osho. So we're nearing 60 in that category. Here's Bradshaw. We'll get it to Kicker to Van Ness. Trying to get it into control. Loose basketball picked up and stolen by the Osho. Another turnover. Blue Dragons with 28 now. The Osho a lot. Trey. Rimming off no good. Kimbrough rebound. That's just in basketball. Ogle, a minute and 24 to go. Ogle across the timeline. Now they'll pull it back a little bit. Bradshaw settle things down. Milsha's got a foul, and they do. They died the foul. It's going to be on Brown. It'll send the Blue Dragons Bradshaw to the line, I believe. Or is it Ogle? Yeah, should, should be, be Bradshaw. Should be Bradshaw. That's the dead zone that you lose now that you have just a two-man crew because that is the area of the court where that center official typically would be. And because Adams went to the locker room, you have no one over there. So of course it's Goldsmith as the lead official from the baseline to come out and move his focus away from the lane and grab that foul back up near half court. That was a fourth, by the way, on Brown. She picks up the fourth. Free throw by Bradshaw was good. We'll give it a little bit more breathing room. A five point dragon lead at 80 to 75. Second toss is perfect. Bradshaw with seven points. And the Blue Dragon lead is at six with a minute and 14 to go. Brown will bring it up for Neosho. Show. They're going to fire away quickly. Brown has it right side. They'll weave a little bit. Now she goes right wing. Double penetration. Back to way. Ogle with the ball. Bradshaw with the steal. Ogle with the drive. Layoff. Good. Hutchinson in transition again. Lead it now by 83 75. A three from the outside by Neosho. Missing badly. Saved the win bounds. And. Not in time, no out of bounds at win. It'll be a Hutchinson ball with 51.1 seconds to go, leading it by an eight point margin. Here comes Mickens in for Kimbrough, and Kimbrough with a, a great game. A great game by Kimbrough. She checks out. Played a long time with those four fouls, Darren. Really did a good job. Got a block in the middle of all that, had a big rebound moments ago, and just to get that and one that sparked this Blue Dragon team. Ogle wraps the pass around to Bradshaw. She'll be fouled, and we'll see the foul on Jessica Jones. That'll be only her second. At the line will be Bradshaw with 41.7 seconds to go. Blue Dragons, Bradshaw at the line to try to add to that lead. Free throw toss off, it's marked no good. T has got to be tired. 
She'll shoot a second one. The lead is eight. She can make it a three-possession game with a free throw here. Kramer set to come in. Free throw toss up and good. Bradshaw got it down after the miss. She's in double figures with ten. And Kramer will come into the lineup, and the Blue Dragons will take a timeout. 41.7 seconds to go. Hutchison leading 84-75. The initial ball will return right after this 30-second timeout. Just when you thought you were done with taxes, you got a letter from the IRS. Maybe you're being audited, or maybe you filed for an extension and still need some tax help. We at h Block are there for you. We don't stop working on April 15th. Our tax professionals are here to help you year-round. So if you have tax issues you need a hand with, even if h and Block didn't do your taxes the first time around, visit our offices in Hutchinson, Lyons, or Ellsworth and let our experienced tax professionals help get you every dollar you deserve. Blue Dragons lead at 84-75 with 41.7 seconds left. Glenn, that was a timeout by Neosho to advance the ball to yeah, the front court. Sure was. Here's the problem for the Panthers. Only 25% three-point shooting team on the season really need a three here. We'll have 20 minutes in between games. We we, we, we owe you because it's 7.30 right now. So the guys' game was supposed to start. The drive to the basket shot won't go for Neosho, but they get the rebound. They'll keep it alive. They get a fresh 30. 30 seconds remaining. Drive right side, they'll throw one up, not ever to draw the foul. And it's enough to send Neosho to the line to shoot free throws. Into the ball game, shooting free throws will be Kalia Augustine. Out of Walnut, Kansas. I have to admit, I do not know where Walnut, Kansas is. Free throw tosses up and missing. And I pride myself in knowing where these kids are in Kansas are especially from. The Walnut. I don't got it. So that, the, that's to me, man. But is this the part where we go back to Birch? The fact that you have a Birch well, and a Walnut? So. That's a good point. Shot up and good by Augustine. She has 11. And it's 84 76. The Blue Dragon lead is cut a little bit with 30 seconds to go now. 28. Foul in the backcourt. We'll walk up and shoot free throws. First to shoot free throws will be Abby Ogle, and she hit a bunch tonight. She actually has uh, set the record here this season. It's the most free throws by a Blue Dragon in the game this season. She has a chance to extend it from the 10 it's at. Uh, foul, fifth foul was called on Brown, by the way. And that's yeah. problematic for the Panthers because she was their leading scorer with 17. Yeah, she has well, 17. Pins, I guess, has 18, but she was the one that actually hit a couple of threes. Now, once again, the official calls both coaches to the middle of the table to chat a little bit. 27.4 seconds to go. Olga will shoot free throws. And so Brown, I was questioning why they were giving her five fouls, and they have realized in the book she only had four, even though she put up five on the scoreboard. So Brown is still in the game, still four, in the game fouls. four I was wondering because I thought, man, I missed one, and I do miss a lot, but free throw talks is nothing good by Olga. 11 for 11 from the free throw line. One more coming her way. Free throw toss. This comes out on her no good. Rebounds cleared out by Neosho. Brown will bring it up. A reach in foul call on the Dragons on Ogle. Misses for the first time and then fouls out. So Ogle will foul out at the 20.9. Time in the ball game with 13 points. 11 of her 13 came from the free throw line. Napasua will come in. Napasua out of Queensland, Australia. Loves Tim Tam chocolate bars. Do we have those here? I got them some for. Where'd you find them? Well, Amazon's an amazing <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Free throw toss is up and good. The line is brown. So she has 18 now. Not Kit Kat, but Kim Cam. Kim Cam. T I M T A M. Free throws up and good. It's kind of a, a biscuit and chocolate. Both free throws were good, so 19 points for Brown and a timeout on the court. 20.9 seconds to go. The Dragon lead is cut a little bit. 85 78. We'll take a quick. 
Well, let's keep it here because they're about to wrap. And they're going to go with the full one minute. We'll take a 30-second timeout. We'll be right back. To anyone considering a change in family doctors or looking for an attentive primary care physician who's more concerned about you than your insurance, welcome to Prairie Star Health Center. We offer health care held to a higher standard with a choice of dedicated, compassionate physicians. Experience the difference you'll feel when you have a patient-centered medical home. Prairie Star Health Center, 30th and K61 in Hutchinson. Eighty-five, seventy-eight. Hutchinson with the lead with 20.9 seconds to go. Talking about the Lady Dragons. They what? Impressed with the Osho student section. They are really here in full force. And smaller schools do a pretty good job with their student sections being active. Well, and of course, it's easy to make the student section look a little bit bigger when the gym is smaller. And that goes a long way with the sound as well. You mentioned how loud the sound system is in here. The student section doesn't even have to be that loud to really let this echo off of the walls and make it a loud atmosphere for these Blue Dragons. Men's game to follow here in just a little bit. 20.9 seconds to go in this one. Dragons leading at 85-78. Go check a little off 7th and South. He put in Parsons, Kansas into his phone when he decided what time leave time was. It got me here earlier, got here, though, didn't it? God got you here, so he fulfilled <laughs> that mission. He, he was happy for me, but he wasn't. Here comes the inbound. Schemmel gets it in, picking it up for Zrobuck, but she stepped out of bounds. Put her heel out of bounds, but she caught it. Here comes Kramer to the lineup. Only took a half second off. 19 and a half to go. 29 turnovers yeah. for the Blue Dragons. Schemmel will check out. Glenn, we've seen 59 turnovers between these teams. Is that close to the record? It's got to be. It's got to be. It's gotta At least be. for this season. I know it is for this season. Brown will bring it up for the Osho. It goes down. Another turnover. Jump ball called. It'll be Blue Dragons basketball. Another turnover against the Osho. Bodies all over the place. It'll be Hutchinson basketball. It's gotten to the point where I gotta quit doing the tally marks and actually physically write out the number. They're so big in the turnover category. Seven point dragon lead, 12.7 to go. Hutch is gonna win this one and go to 10 and 0 on the year. The Osha's gonna fall to four and nine. They will be one and two in their conference race. They're clearing the bench now. The Osho substitutions coming in. As JJ Davis kind of waving the flag and saying that's probably gonna be it. But his team get game get team get a good run. They push Hutchinson about as far as you can push. Well, don't be surprised if they foul. He sent in some players to have fouls to give. And there it is in the backcourt. You were correct on now and I think it's Bowling. Check that. It's, it's Dillinger. Actually Dillinger out of Erie, Kansas. We'll walk down. Bradshaw will shoot it with eleven seconds remaining. Well, John called this one out of his Dragon Talk show the other night, basically saying if we play similar to what we did against Independence, we will be on the edge. We feel like Bradshaw is good. But enough stick to itiveness by this Dragon Girls team to get it done. They're young. They're very young. They're going to make a lot of mistakes, and they we saw those tonight. Free throw toss by Bradshaw is up and good. Got that one down. Bradshaw is one of three players for the Blue Dragons who most of her points have come from the free throw line. Eight of her 12 have come from there. Same is true of Roebuck and Abby Ogle. 87-78 to drive by Brown. Layup, not good. A rebound cleared off the floor by Neil Show. They'll shove it up. Shot up, missing. Rebound cleared by the Blue Dragons. That's it. Your final score for the Blue Dragons, 87-78. They win it over the Osho Panthers in a tight ball game here in Chinook, Kansas. We'll take a two-minute timeout, add up on the numbers. Again, your final, Lady Dragons 87, Lady Panthers and the Osho 78. We'll be back in two minutes. When you're looking for jewelry that's one of a kind, remember Amelia Bedelia is filled with thousands of beads and stones. And with my passion for design, I can create something that's perfect for you. Amelia Bedelia is 115 and a half South Main Street in downtown Hutchinson. Go Blue Dragon. This is Kelly, owner of Brick House Boutique. Whether you're getting a jump start on your holiday gift buying or you're looking for the perfect outfit for yourself, come see my new selection of gorgeous, comfortable clothing that I know you'll fall in love with. That's Brick House Boutique, 117 South Main in Hutchinson. 
Big City Chic in a downtown boutique. HCC 